Yeah, good morning. Good morning. Movement Church, wow. This place is great. It's big. Yeah. All right, well, uh, I'm going to try to behave myself so I can get invited back. <laughs> I never get invited back anywhere. So when I do, it's a miracle. <laughs> well, that's okay, you know. I like to roam. I'll go anywhere. All right. So yeah, I'm not exact technically a minister. I'm actually a counselor by trade. So uh, if uh, I say some things that don't sound like a minister would say, <laughs> I just warned you. <laughs> I'm not a minister. And. Uh, yeah. Counselor. counselor. Yeah, I'm a counselor. <laughs> and uh, I've been a counselor for over 40 years. And 25 of those years I was a secular counselor. And then my youngest daughter, Tracy, led me to the Lord. And i uh, been doing Christian counseling ever since then, 2005. And so I, I retired from that, my secular life, and went into the ministry full time. And then I gradually drifted into deliverance. Not because I wanted to do it. <laughs> Not too many people, you know, want to do that kind of thing. Yeah. It just kind of came to me. And so I started getting referrals, private counseling sessions, and then that kind of started developing, and then it kind of expanded, and I thought, well, if it's expanding that direction, maybe I ought to go that direction. So that's, that's how I kind of fell into it, in a way you know, some, somewhat by accident, but I don't believe it was an accident. Yeah, that's right. Uh, as you can tell, uh, in the United States, uh, we're in trouble here. Yeah. Particularly this state. This is one of the worst ones for Satan's taking, he taken over. And uh, deliverance ministries are the flavor of the month now. They're all over YouTube and there was a movie came out come out in Jesus name that's the biggest thing in deliverance ever ever landed in the country and uh, now there's like eight people on YouTube everybody doing deliverances they're blowing demons out of people in parking lots uh, garages shopping malls everything and unfortunately the system that they're imploring uh, is damaging people and okay? All deliverance ministries, if, it's their val if they're valid, center around repentance. Yeah. So <clears throat> casting demons out of someone can actually be harmful if they don't repent of their sins and they don't renew their mind because spirits come back and uh, somebody who uh, is not saved or someone who's a baby Christian or somebody that got delivered at a shopping mall. They don't have any weapons to f stay clear, clean, because uh, it's difficult to repeat, uh, preach a repentance sermon at a shopping mall or something like that. So a lot of these people on YouTube have a really nice anointing for deliverance, but they don't have the wisdom to use it properly, <clears throat> so the devil is taking advantage of them, and he's outsmarting them. Mm -hmm. And so, a lot of people uh, use manifestations to draw crowds and likes and clicks. Mm -hmm. The problem there is, again, without repentance and renewing your mind, these people will not last. Because, as you know, in Matthew 12 and Luke 11, demons consider your body a house. They call it a house. I will return to my house. And disembodied spirits don't have a body, so demons can't pick up a chair and hit me over the head. They have to use somebody to pick the chair up to hit me over the head. So all spirits want a body. That's their goal. And then they use that body and their mind to control their environment. That's how they operate. You all know that. So, 
my deliverance ministry is based around repentance and renewing the mind, not on manifestations. Those are not what's important. Just because somebody's flopping around like a carp. I mean, it gets, it gets a lot of looks, but really you're trying to help people. You want them healed. You don't like get likes. Likes are not important. Getting healed is important. Changing your mind into the mind of Christ, that's important. Repenting of your sin, absolutely required. Changing how you think, your attitudes, absolutely required. Okay? Yes. I guess so. It's fun to watch you guys on YouTube. That, that's, that's, a, that's great. But be careful with that. Mm -hmm. It's not the full gospel. Got to do it right. So We'll take questions as we go. Hey, I'm, there's no structure to this, so. Yeah. I wanted to ask um, because the manifestation part, of, I have a problem with that because there's so many spirits and stuff that can come in and cause confusion, all kinds of different stuff while people are being mass delivered. And I've always heard it too. You have to have the spirit of God living in you in order to get that deliverance because in fact, if not, they want to come back and claim their house, right? Well, I'll explain that in a minute. Now you just, you just opened up a little Pandora's box there. I am known for that sometimes. So. I, I could tell that. Yeah, so that question there, I'm going to hold off till about 15 slides, then I'll clear that up. All right. Anybody angry yet or ready to leave? <laughs> Nothing? Okay. Uh, uh, Julie's here. Julie, go ahead and stand up. We've got a Zoom. Tell them, hon. Zoom. We have Zoom services at uh, the Deliverance Center. And uh, they're powerful, okay? Uh, last Wednesday on Rick and Stephanie's Zoom, I think 40 or 50 people at the same time were going through deliverance. It was unbelievable. So, and, and Julie has hers for the ladies. Go ahead. Yeah, um, so we do Zoom on Mondays at 6.30 p.m. It's just for ladies, sorry guys. Some, some people are here from this kind of point. That's really awesome. We have we average about 60 people on there, ladies, and we do a teaching. And right now we're talking about relationships and what the Bible has to say about that. And, and then um, we do prayers for healing and deliverance. And yes, multiple people will be going through deliverance and see soul wound healing. Um, people get to ask questions, and it's really great. Um, yeah. Zoom in. So if you want that, that Zoom link, you can email go to Mike and we'll get that to you. Right. Monday nights. Monday nights at 6.30. Ladies, 6.30, okay? That's Kelly back there. She kind of runs the ministry. So if you have any questions, she can answer them for you. She tells us what to do, when to do it, how to do it. All right. I have a monthly seminar. I have a YouTube teaching channel. You can watch all the seminars. Uh, we have women's seminars. We have a children's deliverance service every month. That is spectacular. <clears throat> That'll warm your heart seeing kids get delivered. Amen. You wouldn't believe it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And they're easy to deliver because they don't have all the church baggage that adults do. They don't have all those blocking religious crap. Boom, they just come out. It's fabulous. Fabulous. You don't have to overcome a lot of indoctrination, a lot of religiosity, a lot of evangelical stuff. They don't have that. So they just boom. There they go. It's great. Seeing people get help, that's, that's the best thing. That's all that really matters. All right, let's, shall we go? All right. Let's see what we got here. There's our YouTube channel. You can catch all my... My teachings and everything there, like 300 of them, all kinds of them. <clears throat> send me an email here, and I'll send you this miracle list. This is the most important thing. It's a step-by-step -step guide to deliverance and healing. It works 100% of the time. 
I'll send you a copy. I send a couple dozen of them out a week. Okay? The problem is only about 10% of the people do it. So when you see the list, don't get overwhelmed with it. Just take it one step at a time. You do number one first. That's all you're on. One. And the first one will shock you. And it goes on from there. Okay? Very important. I have a deliverance training course in the event that uh, somebody <laughs> might want to get into this ministry. <laughs> Obviously, I don't sell a lot of them. Uh, there they are. Get it on the website. There's our Wednesday night Zoom, the one I was just telling you about, 40 or 50, all at once. It's amazing. Wednesday nights, 6 o'clock, California time. Now you can donate on the website if you want to, on the PayPal button there, hardcorechristianity.com. I have a uh, podcast Sunday morning. I'll be doing it tomorrow at 9 o'clock at California time. Just go to twitch.tv and then put in HCCADC. And you're there. See you tomorrow morning. I'll be in North Carolina. Anybody know anybody there? <laughs> Nobody? You do? Yeah. I'll be in North Carolina at the Inn of Last Resort. I hope that's not an omen. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Franklin, wherever that is. <laughs> There's Julie. Zoom. Right there. Oops. There's Ann. Where's Ann? She just went that way. She just went that way. Ann has a Zoom. I send all my California calls to Ann. I get a lot of calls from California for prayer, so I ship them over here for Zoom. When is that Zoom? Saturday. It's on Saturdays. Saturday, Saturday evening. Six. Six o'clock. Saturday evening at six o'clock. 6, 6.30 Pacific. 6.30 Pacific? Yeah, 6.30 okay. Pacific is Ann. Yeah, Ann and, 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 yeah. There's a Wednesday morning, and that is at 10 a.m. Pacific, and that is more like impromptu worship and some prayer. Okay. But Saturday night is the more structured, where we're okay. going through things in the parlor. And, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you helping her? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. So the, one of what we're trying to say is um, there's, there's all kinds of help available. You don't, I got nothing to do with it. It's all goes. All right. I wrote three books, one on mental illness, one on divine healing, the other on Satan. You can order those off the website. Okay, let's start. Any questions before we start? All right. <clears throat> the first thing you have to explain to people in the deliverance ministry is how a Christian can have a demon. It causes a lot of confusion. Everybody has a big fight over it. Okay? But if you look at it this way, it makes perfect sense. Can Christians be possessed by demons? No. They cannot be possessed. That's not possible because the Holy Spirit's in your spirit, man, and demons can't, can't get in there. But they can get into your body causing a physical illness or your brain causing a mental illness. Even though your spirit man is born again, the rest of you is not born again. Your body's not born again. It doesn't happen until the rapture. Your soul is not born again. You've still got emotional problems and wounds that need to be removed. Yeah. Your mind is not born again. That's a process of renewal that goes on over time and everybody renews at their own rate. No two people are the same. But the Bible does say, and I'd recommend you keep these scriptures handy in your Bible, these hint that a Christian can have a demon. Okay? And here they are. According to 1 Timothy 3, Christians can be judged, trapped, and verbally degraded and abused by Satan. 2 Timothy chapter 2, they can be trapped and taken alive as a prisoner of Satan. Jesus said in Luke 11, both light and darkness can be in the same person. The light being in your spirit man, the darkness in the body. Yeah. 
And according to James, Christians can receive wisdom that is demonic, earthly, and soulish. Okay? <clears throat> so if you keep these scriptures handy, you can make that argument that Christians can be infected but not possessed. That's good. There's a difference. Mm -hmm. No possession. Mm -hmm. In 1 Timothy 4, it says that Christians are capable of leaving their faith and listening to lying spirits and teachings of demons. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 11, it says that uh, Christians can receive a false Jesus, a different spirit, and a different gospel. And in Galatians 1, it says Christians can remove themselves from Christ by believing a, another gospel or a false or fake gospel. Okay, so it doesn't specifically say Christians can have demons, but it sure is a good hints. These are big ones. All right, now here's the famous scriptures. Ephesians 6, everybody's read this. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against archon spiritual rulers against powers, exousia, spiritual authorities, against Cosmo Creator, the rulers, spiritual rulers, world rulers of this Ion Age, against spiritual wickedness, poneria is where we get our English word perverted, perverted spirits in high places. Now this word here you'll need to remember. Yeah? It's also the same word translated in some verses as heaven, but it doesn't mean heaven, heaven where God lives. In Colossians 1 it outlines it again, only it adds a couple. Whether there be thrones, thronos is a spiritual seat of authority, Dominions is kuriotis, it means lordships, spiritual lordships. And these words were used in the other verse, rulers and authorities. Yeah. Against, here's what it was talking about. Here's the word, heaven, high places. This is it here. This is the atmosphere that surrounds the earth. Yeah. This word, Aranas, is heaven, heaven, where God lives. This is heaven, heavenlies, heavenlies around the planet. We are seated in Christ in heavenly places. Where's that? Not in heaven, heaven. I'm standing here in San Marcos. I'm not in heaven. But I'm in heavenly places here in Christ. Amen. All spirit beings and human beings travel through the heavenlies. This one. Not here. Heaven, heaven. We're not traveling through there. Well, Brother Mike, my neighbor goes to heaven every week. Um, Hopefully they're here so we can get that out of them. Okay, that's not going to heaven here. Okay. Those are demons faking you out. The atmosphere is what it's talking about, the heavenlies. Okay? Here's where demons move, Satan moves, angels move, we move. Everybody's in the heavenly, the atmosphere. So, I okay? Where Paul says in the Bible, it says... Um, I know a man that traveled outside of the body. Yeah, Paul. So he never went to heaven. He just stayed in the first heaven. Paul. I think that verse is that verse. He went to heaven. Paul did. Because he said, I saw un things that are too unspeakable to mention. Yeah. The people roaming around on YouTube, no. <laughs> They're not, that's not Apostle Paul. Don't get sucked into that heavenly stuff. It's insanity. 
I went to heaven last month and I went to hell. <laughs> Stop. That's not happening. It's a trick. It's a distraction. All these things here are here. So, theoretically, uh, San Marcos is being controlled by somebody from this world here. Somebody's running this town that we can't see. In the heavenlies, not in heaven where God lives. This is not heaven here. This, this is far from it. Heaven is spectacular. This is not spectacular. No offense. See that? That's what it's talking about. All right, now, uh, when you explain to someone a Christian can have demons, all you got to do is break it down for them and keep it simple, and they'll just grasp it. <laughs> <laughs> I use a lot of subtle humor that's not very funny but when people get home they start giggling they start <laughs> now a human being is made out of five parts and here's your five parts and covering this part here noose is your mind it's in your brain Numa is your spirit man where the Holy Spirit lives, if you're a born-again Christian. Suke is your soul. That's where your, your emotions come out of. Love, hate, rage, anger, whatever your emotions are, they're coming out of your soul. Sama is your body and a medication. Anybody on Soma right now? That's this part, the physical part of you. That's the container that the inner man is in, and your sunatosis is your conscience, which is the seat of your morality. And so, if you feel something's wrong and you don't want to do that, that's coming out of where? Your conscience. Correct. Uh, if you're yelling at a football game, yes! I am from Kansas, so I'm, I'm what? Chiefs fan. And I have had a lot to cheer about the last few years. That's coming out of my soul. Your soul. You're in love. Your soul. Uh, two plus two is four. You're mine. Your free will is in your mind. Your mind is in charge of the rest of it. That's why the Bible requires you to renew your mind, number one. Developing the mind of Christ, which brings everything else into your walk with Christ. Your mind has to go first. Your mind is the toughest enemy to overcome. It takes prayer and determination to control and retrain your mind on how do you think. That's good. It does not happen from Tuesday to Thursday. It takes a long time to renew your mind. Any problems here? None? All right. Now here's your five senses and everything in your life from birth to death comes in through these windows into you as a person. Correct? Mm -hmm. You hear stuff, you smell stuff, you taste stuff. Everything comes in through these gates, 
It's processed in the mind and stored in the brain. Two plus two is four. I saw the teacher write it up here, two plus two is four. I'm in first grade. Process, store. I don't need a teacher anymore. What's the next thing? Yeah. Normal human learning, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, emotional pain is not stored like that in the body. And here's where your ministry comes in at Movement Church. When a child's abused, the pain, the abuse is noted in the mind, stored in the memory, but the pain of it is stored here in your soul. Yeah. Yeah. Hence, the entire counseling and therapy industry on the planet Earth. Everyone wants counseling, therapy, drugs, whatever it is, to heal these wounds on the soul because these wounds hurt just like a physical pain, soul wounds actually hurt worse. Soul pain can be worse than physical pain. And your soul is a problem, huge problem, in that once it's scarred by abuse or trauma, it cannot be healed. The scar is permanent like a tattoo. The only person can remove these scars, no one else can do it. So in, when I used to be a secular counselor or a therapist or a social worker, what have you, what you're doing there is patching. You're teaching coping mechanisms. You're trying to get that pain to go from a eight to a seven, a six and five. But you can't heal it. I never healed anybody in 25 years. I helped a lot of people, N never heal anybody. I never saw anybody healed until I saw the Holy Ghost do it. And when I saw that the first time, 2005, I said, hey, I'm hooked. That's what I gotta have. No more me. Any questions here before we skip? Okay. A lot of intelligent people at Movement Church. Okay, here we go. Now, I, I made this for you. All those things in the heavenlies, I put them and ranked them here in these scriptures here. Well, okay, so they're there. And this is what the spirit world, in a way, looks like. It's structured like humanity. So you got CEO, CFO, manager, district manager, regional manager. They all go down to the janitor. It's all structured. And so is the spirit world. Satan at the top and then everything under him. He's the boss. Or God at the top. No, this is the kingdom of darkness. God's not in there. No, no. Satan runs this whole horrible nightmare. And you can see it. America is going to hell in a handbasket because of this ruling in the heavenlies dominating the people. How he does that, I'll explain in a minute. Is this helpful? Yeah. Yeah. The whole planet is run by these individuals in the heavenlies. They run the whole thing. And the churches. All the churches in some respect, greater or lesser degree, are under their control. This is how it works, according to Paul. Yeah. Um, Hi, Jess. Where's trauma stored? I heard the trauma stored in, in your soul. In our body. In your soul. The emotional pain stored in your soul. Trauma can be physical. You know, what's the worst? 
uh, combat. That's the highest form of stress known to man, it's combat. So you can be shot, causing trauma to your soul and your body. Well, you know, and they stated people who lose limbs have phantom feelings sometimes because of the, the wounds in the war. Yeah, now, uh, what she's talking about there is phantom pain. Phantom pain. Yeah. You ever heard of that? Got your leg cut off, you still fear your leg. That's just your inner man. Your inner man looks like your outer man. So if I stepped out of my inner man here, I'd kind of look like this guy. Two arms, two legs, head, torso. The memory of trauma? Yeah. Not, not separated from your soul. Yeah, you're, you, you can develop uh, physical attributes from trauma from the soul. For example, uh, you know, a, a tick. You got a tick. Okay, that's a physical demonstration of emotional pain. Remove the pain, the tick will stop. You ever seen people with jerks? That so how about a person in an abusive relationship? What's that? person in an abusive relationship. Abusive relationship, yeah. That will form the other yeah, yeah. Uh, the, the pain in the soul transfers to the body. But the root of it is the soul. Like, like your spirit man is the seat of your spirituality, the Holy Spirit's in your spirit man, but it can transfer to the body. Yeah. You know, some... Some faith healers have uh, some anointing in their hands, but that's coming from your spirit man. So it comes from the spirit man, transfers into the body, transfers into the sick person. Trauma from the soul can transfer to the body and panic attack. The, it's coming from the soul, transferring into the body, demonstrating trauma. Yeah. Same way with your mind. If you have a strong mind, you can control body temperature, blood pressure, you know. People who have weak minds can't do it. But it comes from the mind into the body, you know. Your body's kind of like a sponge. <clears throat> but their job, their job here, this, this system, is to control our bodies. They want to dominate us. Yeah. They're control freaks. Yeah, they are. <laughs> and they demand obedience. And if you don't give it to them, they will whip you until you cough it up. Okay. Well, let's go on to something else you won't like. Uh, here it is. <laughs> God used the book of Job to give us a monstrous revelation of what Job? No, it's the spirit world. And this book is as relevant today as it was 3,000 years ago. Here God showed you, showed Job, who is us, what's going on in their lives, but what's really causing it mm -hmm. yeah. is the spirit world. That's the purpose of Job, okay, among many others. Job didn't understand anything about the spirit world. So he thought God was doing it. He thought God did it to him. So the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Well, God was showing us that, hey, the things that happen to you in your Christian life can be coming from a spiritual source. And is not that person over there that you think is abusing you. That person is being manipulated by a spirit being to abuse you. See that? Some are possessed. See that? Some are possessed literally because they yeah, some. worship Satan or other demonic entities. Yeah, sure. And, and are controlled to do evil, uh, even torture and stuff. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Adolf Hitler and Stalin, they were stone cold possessed. Okay. Nobody in here is. We don't, I don't, I don't see very many possession cases. 
I used to have a prison ministry. I'd, I'd see them occasionally there. I had a jail ministry years ago. I, I, yeah, I'd see some possessed people. Not often. Not often. You, you see them a lot now because of homelessness, these homeless camps. You'll see people roaming around who are possessed. But in church here, no. They're all, it's infect, infections, not possessions. Now here you notice, this is Satan's power in the spirit world, pulling stunts in the natural world. He came from the spirit world to create damage in the natural world, and Job went through horror. But it was our benefit. It's a great book. Well, anyway, in the book of Job, here you can see all the things that Job thought was being caused by the weather or other people, when in fact, it was Satan doing it. Controlling the weather, controlling other humans, taking over their mind, causing them to do horrible things. And that exact thing is happening now in our world. Satan controls people and causes them to do horrible things. He controls the weather and kills people. All kinds of people got killed two days ago in tornadoes. You saw it on the news. The devil can manufacture the weather and murder people. And here's what he did to Job. Killed his livestock, killed his servants, killed his camels, used tornado to kill his kids. And Job didn't know it was the devil doing it. Because yeah. he wasn't around during that meeting in heaven when the angels came to God and there was Satan standing there and then they had that contest over Job. Satan went from the presence of Jehovah and he nakah, beat down Job with shaheen, burning ulcers. So here you have the devil causing physical illnesses, which is what spirits of infirmity do. They run around all the time causing spiritual illnesses. Almost every case of cancer, not all, but almost every is caused by cancer demons. They get in the body, they give them cancer. Yeah. Satan gave Job a horrible case of bowl, boils, I don't even want to think of. And then, <clears throat> here's an important scripture you need to remember for the rest of your ministry. Uh, one day Jesus was casting out a demon, and in the King James Bible it says, it, but it's actually, I'll toss he. All demons are males, but many of them impersonate females. And you'll see that a lot in the trans movement now. All of that is mental illness, all of it's demons. There's no such thing as trance. That's satanic. And he was, Kafos, had a speech impediment. Did you hear what I said? What did I say? No. The demon had a... Spirit had a... The spirit had a speech impediment. Did you hear that? The, the spirit had a speech impediment and got into his body and the man developed a speech impediment. Here's how it works. Take a breath. Demons can only give you what they have. That's why there's all kinds of different demons. Billions of them, they all have different sicknesses. So this person might have lust problems. This one might have cancer. This one might have a speech impediment. This one might have bipolar. Where'd they get those things from? The spirit had it. A lust demon cannot give you cancer. They can only give what they have. Okay? The Holy Spirit is not able to give you cancer. He can only give you what he has, which is the fruit of the Spirit. He can't give you anything else because he doesn't have it to give. Hello? 
Yes. You got an anger problem? That's an anger spirit. The, the spirit got in the body and gave the person, they transfer it to the person. You don't need the name of the demon to get them out. Just look at the symptoms, blow them out. <laughs> Hear that anointing? No. <laughs> now, notice here, when the spirit is removed from the guy's head, clunk, he starts talking normally. Why? Because the demons had a speech impediment and gave it to the guy. When he's removed, the guy doesn't have it anymore. When the cancer demon comes out, they go home. Why did your husband cheat on you? A lust spirit got in his body and then gave him lust and boom, cheat. Yeah. Why'd your dad always scream and yell? An anger demon got into dad and now dad gets triggered, boom, he screams. See, they, on, they only give you what they have. God can only give you what he has. He can't give you anything else. If he ain't got it, you can't have it. Well, to get rid of demons, I'll go over that in a minute. They got to repent first. Don't, don't try to cast demons out of people. You're not YouTube. That's stupid. First, they got to repent. Then that anger. So if, it's, if the spirits of anger gave them anger, then they have to repent of anger because a demon cannot make you do anything. He can only push you to do it. You yielding is the sin. So if I got a lust demon, I don't have to cheat or look at porn, but I yielded to the temptation. So now his sin is my sin. Yeah. 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 So for me to get delivered, I got to repent of lust. Yeah. Even though he's triggering it, the lust spirit's triggering it, I'm yielding to the temptation, the urge, the sin, so I got to repent. If the person won't repent, I don't even try to get demons out of them. I just say, well, come back later. <laughs> yeah. But you will come across people that have no idea of repentance, but they're still demon possessed. Yes, that's common. So there's uh, a different tactic than that. I've seen more of the deliverance in the individual, and then you come and bring them into repentance. Repentance, yeah. Yeah, but it's, uh, sometimes it'll work with the repentance first, but I've seen it's more of the, the love and care of God, understanding that, with yep. the Spirit's out, yeah. and the deliverance, and then once, the, uh, once there's that, the person is, uh, is getting, getting restored, mm -hmm. then the repentance comes. Yep. Then the another mind. Yep, that, that's exactly right. Now that's a smaller percent of the cases, so let's say 5%. But what I'm trying to share with you is what more, you're more probably going to run into. The, the bigger cases are ones where the person knows they're sinning. They know they shouldn't yell at their family. That, that kind of case there where you're possessed, now that's, that's tough. That's a different kettle of fish. You won't see that often. You'll see this all the time, everywhere. It's like healing, for example. Some people can get healed first and then get saved. Yeah. Okay. But again, I'm, I'm just going for the bigger percent here. I, I, I can't teach everything. I don't have time. <laughs> yeah. I love that you clarify the agreement the agreement because there's a lot of people who think they're victims of yeah. demons mm -hmm. 
and it's like, no, he missed well, that there was agreement with that, the demon, right? That's right. Now, she, yeah. uh, what you said was right on both counts, though. People are victims of demons, and demons torture them and beat them and screw them over. But I have to show them how they open the door and how they are cooperating. Mm -hmm. But they're definitely victims, no question. Ever, the vic but if you see yourself as a perpetual victim, we can't get any demons out of them because, you know, they think, oh, I didn't do anything. Yeah. This ain't my fault. Yeah. You know, well, wait a minute. You said this, you did that, you opened that door. Well, hold on a minute. Let's get that repented of. And then grace covers yeah. the rest of the deliverance, just yeah. like you said. Yeah. It's scriptural because in Week Probable 4, 20 to 24, it talks about the ear gate, the eye gate, mm -hmm. and the heart gate. And out of the, all issues of life come from oh, the, the heart. heart. Mm -hmm. So when you look at it, that's why Jesus always talks about your heart. Mm -hmm. Because it's the four stages of the heart. You know? So what you're looking at. Well, the gate, what you're hearing is a gate, what you're believing is a gate. All those are gates, what you come to believe in. There's five of them. Yeah, so, but, but at the end of it, every gate that's open is because of where your heart's at. Mm -hmm. Right, and then why would the demons want your heart? Because what you just said. Mm -hmm. Yeah, control. That's what they're after. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. perfect. Your heart. He exactly. You not worry about what you're doing. I mean, they worried about it. He knows if he can get your heart, Amen. everything else will change after that. Right. That's the whole purpose of he's after heart. Yeah, he just summed it up, and that's the purpose of me coming here. To get somebody to turn their heart totally over to the Lord, you've got to get the spirits out of there because they're always throwing a monkey wrench into everything. Your mind, your emotions, they're trying to jack it up. They give you addictions. They give you sickness. we got to get them out so this person is free to bloom. In Christ. So, um, just tonight, your opinion on bloodline curses and inheritances? Bloodline curses and everything, that's a secondary issue. Okay, so in deliverance, you go to that last. Those are easy to break off. What's hard is getting the person to repent of yelling at their spouse. Yeah. That's tough. Bloodline curse, we'll cut that off easy. Go for the most important thing. Okay? Bloodline curses are easy to break off. Porn, tough. Tough. Generational curses, we'll get to those. Make it personal, and you'll see a lot more deliverances quicker if it's personal. Something this person did. Something they feel. Much better. You look on YouTube and again, it's all screwed up. They're calling out Ahab and Jezebel and generational curses. Some of the demons will come out because they got good anointings. Great. Then they come back. Then they come back a, a day, a week. No. Personal repentance, though, keeps them out. See, that shuts the door. Yeah. It's interesting how you see a lot of services where they don't do the altar call um, and then they want to manifest into let's cast people out or healing or prophesy. But yeah. I've always been of the opinion the altar call is the most important because Jesus has to reign in all of this. All of it. Yeah, no, that's true. But again, some, sometimes uh, mass deliverances work. I've done them many times before, but I always set it up on repentance, not generational curses or bloodline stuff. You know, who needs to repent of right. porn? Oh. See, that's the key. Right. It's like they're admitting the truth. The repentance is like an admitting the truth. Oh, you have to admit it or you can't get him out. If yeah. there's no admitting the truth that you need to repent, no. then there's really actually no truth to anything that's just useless. But you're, why, why do I have to repent? I'm, not, I'm a good person. I do good things. Yeah. I don't need to repent. Can't get any demons out. Can't get anybody any demons out of those people. I go to the next one. Yeah. You know, if, if they're not going to repent, go to the next one. Don't get stalled. Because yeah. somebody else needs your help. Okay, now, uh, illustrating this, the most important thing, a spirit gets in the body, 
and what happens to the person? Well, it depends on what the Spirit has. They can only give you what they have, and the Holy Spirit is exactly the same. He can only give you what He has. They can't give you anything they don't have, and you and I are the same way. I cannot give you something I don't have. The Spirit got into the guy's head, right? And he got into the speech center of the brain here, and then the guy started stuttering, and he stuttered for years. Could have happened as an infant. We don't know. Once the Spirit was removed, the guy starts to talk normal. That's the essence of deliverance. You want the person restored. And we see that in the Bible. The man in the garden gets him. You see it all over the place. I'll go over a couple with you. Yeah. We'll see, be seeing it here today. Okay, now, be very careful at church or at religious meetings or at a YouTube rally. Uh, don't let anybody put their hands on you. Okay? So, a lot of these uh, prophetic churches, they got, uh, they line everybody up, and then you go through this tunnel, and everybody's praying for you. They never do that. Okay? This guy that just prayed for you, he's laughing. He could have been on porn yesterday. You have no idea who that person is. Do not let anybody you don't know touch you. They could transfer something into you. Okay? Now, I didn't say shake hands with them. There's nothing wrong with that. If it's a spiritual event, a transfer can occur. If it's a normal handshake or how you doing, buddy, what's up? That's not usually transferring. That's, that's not spiritual. That's just a greeting. Okay? But if you go through a fire tunnel... You're you're in, you're going to be in deep trouble. Yeah. Don't you have to open the door like that to transfer? Yeah, the door is open. If you go through the fire tunnel, you're opening yourself up to whatever they've got. Yeah, See, and this guy here who was on porn yesterday, he's on the prayer team at the church. He, but he's on porn. Okay. You say, well, how can that happen? How can it happen? It happens all the time. You stupid. Yes. <laughs> this guy's going to transfer. Okay, do not let anybody spiritually put their hands on you if you don't know them. You're running a terrible risk of picking up a transfer. I have seen in those types of service because they're trying to raise money for, you know, crusades or wherever or to live large, um, that basically they do that. And I've never seen an altar call for Jesus for repentance. I mean, it's rare. Well, I'd stay away from that. But the point I'm trying to make... <clears throat> is if you're in a spiritual setting and somebody puts their hands on you, a psychic, a reader, a channeler, a Pentecostal preacher who's, you know, doing God only knows what, you can pick up transfers, okay? So you want to pray for me? I can pray for you here. Lord, I pray and bless this beautiful woman. See, I'm praying for her. I don't have to put my hands on her. Yeah. See that? Be careful about that. And you know, prison is very open to everybody laying their hands on you. Who is? In prison. In prison? Oh, prison's dangerous. I had a prison ministry for years. Wow, demons are running wild in prison. You can't even imagine it. You have a lot of people laying their hands on you. Oh, and they're transferring spirits left and right in prison. Oh, it's awful. It's awful. But where sin does abound, grace does that much more abound. I had some service in prison that to this day I still cherish. I mean, I saw the Holy Ghost striking these guys down. Yeah. It was fabulous. All right, well, I'm not here to have fun for myself. Let's get back to this. <laughs> Keep yourself, Hagnos, uncontaminated. Don't, you know. Christians are very weak in the United States. They're Mickey Mouse, and they're always running around looking for a word from somebody. You know, can you give me a word? I, yeah, I'll give you a word. You're a weak Christian and you need to start renewing your mind and studying your Bible. What's that the word I wanted? Yeah, right. Can you pray for me? And then they transfer. Yeah. See, and it's, it spreads all over. Yeah. It's awful. If you know somebody, yeah, they can pray for you and put it in. Yeah, that's fine. Good. If you don't know that person, Watch it. Just be cautious. It's better to err on the side of safety than it is to run in there. The 
lot of witchcraft right now. A lot of a lot of witchcraft is infiltrated in the church. A lot of people opening the third eye, doing all kinds of new age stuff, practices in church. That's why we gotta be careful, like you said, yeah. who that touch us. <laughs> yep. Or teach us for that yeah. 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 Okay, well, I better get off that before I get in trouble. Okay, let's pick out some of these spirits that you'll frequently run into in your ministry. These are common spirits. These lust demons are, are uh, really tough. And there's so much lust in our society now. These are one of the main spirits in the United States. Uh, Pornhub and everything. It's... Lust demons are overrunning the country. They're taking over. Okay? And these, these are the spirits. And they're powerful. For example, uh, these demons, uh, lust demons, will attack you at night. Or they'll, uh, they'll fondle you at night. And for example, this is, uh, who is this? Yeah, she had the super-powered lust demons. Here, here's what she said. She had a uh, lust spirit um, masturbate her at night and have sex with her at night. And so in most cases, it's not quite this bad, but, but it's very common to have them uh, sit on your bed or stand at the end of the bed or kind of stand in the corner of the room, kind of a shadowy thing there, or you feel sensations or you're somebody fondling you in the middle of the night, uh, sex dreams, weird stuff like that's them. They usually come in at night, usually when you've hit REM sleep, and they'll move on your body. Okay? And it uh, happens a lot. Uh, uh, Can I go back to the previous uh, report? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the Sayers are uh, the demons that attack women at night in bed, molest them give them bad dreams, different things. They're scary. Uh, these are the ones that attack the men, the leith spirits. Very common. And then sleep paralysis, you ever had that? You're laying in bed and boom, you're frozen. You can't even move. You're trying to talk. Oh, I can't get it out. Something's on top of you. Something's above you. You want to move, you can't. You ever seen it? Well, Job had it. Job's friend had it here. There's a case of it in Job chapter 4. Put this in your little repertoire. And here's how he described it. And it's the same now. This is similar symptoms that Job's friend had are what people have now with sleep paralysis. They're, they could be either lust demons or fear demons. One of those two. On some rare occasions, they'll talk to you, but not, not all the time. It's usually a paralyzing type thing. You can't move. Uh, there's a 3,000-year-old carving in stone of her. They've been around for thousands of years, of course. Okay, let's switch over to this one. Now, uh, in your ministry, you'll see a lot of confusion about these things right here. This is adultery. This is fornication. Okay? So, I need you to take a breath right now. Just relax your body. And just use your mind and say to yourself, I'm not going to get mad at Brother Mike. <laughs> just repeat it again. Close your eyes. You just keep repeating it. Now, <laughs> Let me explain this to you. Fornication is every kind of sex sin you can imagine. Can you um, enunciate what you can for the Yeah. That, that's adultery and that's fornication. And, and everybody gets this mixed up, including ministers. They don't know the difference. So I thought I would... Here's the nitty gritty. You, you, did you get your breath in and you, you said that to yourself, right? You're not mad at me? No. Are you? Actually pronounced them. Muikia? Thank you. Yeah, pornea? 
Pornea is where we get our English word Porn. pornography. Thank you. Now here is, here is fornication. Pornea, all of this is fornication. Everything is fornication. Any sin you can name is fornication, but adultery is fornication, right? Mm -hmm. But all fornication is not adultery. For example, pedophilia may not be adultery. Bestiality is not adultery. What is adultery? It's heterosexual sexual behavior. So if I slept with you, that would be adultery. If I slept with you, it would be fornication, not adultery. Because I'm we're men. She's a female. Adultery. Fornication. If I slept with your pet, that is not adultery, that's bestiality, fornication. Correct? <laughs> if I fondled her, that would be adultery, pedophilia. If I fondled your son, it would not be adultery. It would be fornication, pedophilia. See the difference? You with me so far? <laughs> okay. So is oral sex adultery? Well, it depends who you get it from. Correct? Yeah. So if I am getting oral sex from a male prostitute, it is? Fornication. If it's a female prostitute? It's adultery. Adultery fornication. There's a lot of intelligent people at movement. I don't get this kind of response anywhere else. <laughs> Swingers could be both. Okay, if you're if you're bi, could be adultery, fornication, could mix the stuff. If you live on a farm, only God knows what you're doing on a farm. God. You're laughing. I've had several counseling cases where somebody was involved in bestiality when they were younger. They had horrible demons. Wow. Horrible demons. You want to pick up some demons? Get involved in bestiality. They're almost impossible to get out. But it's not adultery. A cow is not adultery. That's fornication. Correct? Would it fall under adultery? No. No, idolatry. Uh, uses fornication as a, as a support system for idolatry, but idolatry is a separate sin. In the Old Testament, fornication was commonly used to support idolatry. They all had orgies and everything supporting Moloch and Chemosh and so on. But the, the, the sin is different. You can have idolatry without fornication, which we see in our society all over the place. Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, Right. Is oral sex always a sin? If you're not married, yeah. You cannot have sexual relations with somebody if you're not married to that person. That's either fornication or it's adultery and fornication. The Bible says that the bed is not polluted that they're in marriage. Yeah. yeah, you don't you cannot sleep with another guy. You married? Um, to the Lord. Now, if you were married, you slept with uh, Jack and Dick. That's adultery. If you married, if you slept with Sally and Brenda, that's fornication. Question. Wanted to go deeper on that question. Anal sex in marriage. Your opinion, please. There's nothing in the Bible about oral sex or anal sex between married couples. And because I have a uh, Incredibly high IQ. I don't comment on it. <laughs> so the answer to your question is. <laughs> What's that? 
Enoch's sex is a sin of sodomy. It's in the Bible. That's not, that's yeah, no, well, uh, hold on a minute. Now, I'm not going to comment on that. The sodomy mentioned in the Old Testament was a sin because it was two guys yeah. buffing each other. Yeah. That's homosexuality. That's fornication, not adultery. Okay, it doesn't say in there between married couples. Right. Now, I'm not getting involved in it. <laughs> you know, if it's not in the Bible and I start pontificating on stuff, I'm kind of, I'm going to get myself in trouble down the road. Yeah. Like, for example, if this was a big anti-anal sex group and I said, anal sex is a sin, I'd get a lot of applause. But if I go to the next group and they go, wait a minute, now I'm in trouble. What scripture is that? They yell at me. Then I'm going, blah, 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 blah. I don't like to do that. Paul, he just talked about marriages. He just talked about whatever, uh, for the man and woman, whatever is in your marriage, whatever you're doing, that's your marriage. That's the basic line. That the difference is between non-marriage and marriage. You cannot be doing things if you're not married. That's the bottom line. Yeah. The guy's right. And I don't like to get involved in it. I don't like to tell people what they can do in their bed. That's, that's not my position in life. But if you're in somebody else's bed, now that's a different story. That, that says it right there, so I can share that. Okay? Oh, yeah. I was just saying that. Just find, find that line with the Lord. But, yeah, yeah. yeah you, not, you, know, you go talk to the Lord about it, yeah. not me. I'd rather go talk to the Lord. I'll give you a gun for my He This guy just let me off the hook. <laughs> I've never been let off the hook before. Only at the Movement Church. I, I can't wait to come back here. Any questions on what fornication is? And then fornication. What? On the download, the DF? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's all fornication. What's this down for? Download? Those are, those are men that are mar heterosexual married men who have gay affairs. Oh. Stuff like that. They've got a separate life, secret life. Okay. I've never had DL cause that kind of commotion. Do you find it in the church, right? In the church, all of this in the church. In the church, yeah. But, um, <clears throat> the friends with benefits is like relationships. Yeah. You have that a lot of them there. Oh, yeah, sure. You're doing a lot of things. You're like, okay, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. I always think of like, okay, and I talk to my sister about when they say um, when I'm dating somebody and when I'm courting some, somebody, to me, those are two different things. I see courting as more that you're getting to know the person, but not in an intimate way. And the dating is like, okay, wait, maybe there's a possibility of there's intimacy involved in that. Yeah, but uh, uh, again, Dating somebody is not fornication. Now, if you, if you take them to the hotel, now that's a different story. This is, I was talking about sin, sexual sin is what I'm talking about. Not, not you dating somebody. That's a different, you handle that on your own. <clears throat> so you go to a sex club, all porn, porn, all that's porn, right? Yeah. yeah. Everything, so on. And then it's kind of like this. Fornication is the pizza, the whole pizza, but each piece may have a different topping on it. Right, right. So this is a, a guy that likes goats. Here's a guy that likes other guys. Here's a guy that likes gals. Here's a guy that likes kids. All fornication, everything's fornication, but not very little of it's adultery. Right. Heterosexual is adultery, yeah. not homosexual. Mm -hmm. That's fornication. Yeah. Okay, why did I make this distinction, the Greek text? Because Jesus said fornication is grounds for divorce. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yeah. which makes porn grounds for divorce yeah. because you're lusting after that other guy or girl depending on your proclivity. Right. That's a sin, porning. 
You with me? I'm not saying get divorced. I'm not telling you. I'm saying it's grounds for divorce. That's, that's to be handled. You handle that. I'm not doing that. Okay? Yeah. All right, everybody's... Nobody left. Okay. <laughs> Guys, I can't wait to get to Movement Church. Now, for example, once these lust demons get into your family tree up here, they go right down the tree. Any spirit in your family tree doesn't go to another tree. They stay in your tree. And you will see patterns of that spirit. So here you've got David with lust demons. And Bathsheba, Absalom had them. Amnon had them. He raped Tamar. Solomon was a sex addict. You see these demons go right down the tree and turn everybody into a pervert. Yeah. Everybody yeah. is a pervert. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Somebody let them in here. Yeah. They go down the tree. Your family tree is very important to you because you were born into a tree of spirits. Mm -hmm. You'll not only see uh, lust demons, but you'll see addiction demons, you know, or prison. Everybody in this family tree, half of them are in jail. Everybody over here. Half of them are wow. dead. Yeah. Everybody over here, everybody have heart attacks. Everybody over here, they're all alcoholics. Yeah. I'm raised a drug addict. You see these patterns. These are the spirits manifesting as they go down the tree, killing off each one, ready to go to the next generation, murder them, next, murder them. Your kids tar targeted for termination. Can it be stopped? No, unless you do something about it. And that's why you're at this seminar. Yeah. Your family's only hope is you. Yeah. There is no other hope. The demons will take the family, period. Yeah. Yeah. No question. Yeah. I don't care whether you're the king of Israel. They will take your family, yeah. period. Mm -hmm. Unless somebody in here stops them. Yeah. 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 Okay? So you'll see these patterns. Watch for your pattern, and you'll know what kind of demons are in that family tree. Bunch of jailbirds, bunch of drunks. Pedophile, pedophilia, common as anything, right down the tree. Everybody's got an urge for kids. It's all spirits. They get in the body and they hyperventilate your sex drive. And they, make, they give you urges for things you don't want to have. Drugs, alcohol, food, sex. Now, cutters. Oh, cutters, a different story. They put to release endorphins that gives them a, a rush, a high. Yeah, unless they're really trying to kill themselves, right? So. Yeah, well, normally a cutters, we'll get to that in a minute. Cutters are usually rejection demons. <laughs> Any questions on these? Runs in the family, you can spot them real easy. Demons will cause soul ties, okay? So this husband slaps his wife around, then slaps her around again, apologizes, slaps her around again. Why do you keep going back to him? A demonic soul tie between his soul and yours connects. There's a spiritual connection that keeps drawing you back into another beating. And your relatives are going, honey, we love you. Please stop that. Dear God, run. Oh, he's going to change. The person's under a delusion with a soul tie. Yeah. Uh, if you have lust demons, you can have lust of the eyes. You get a scanner in your head. You're always checking people. Night orgasms are very common. Uh, we already went over that. Uh, they come in at night, attack you. Okay, let's switch over. How'd, how'd the lust area go? Any problems with fornication, adultery? Know the difference now? Okay. Let's go to the next type of demon. Uh, demons that give people sicknesses. They have a certain sickness. Whatever sickness they have, they can give it to you if they get in your, your body. 
Okay, transferring your, that's what I was telling you, don't let anybody put a hand, you can pick up transfers. Yeah. Some of them are in spirits of infirmity, and the sickness that person had can transfer to that one. Suddenly that person's got it. Mm -hmm. And everybody's read this verse, haven't you? Yeah. yeah, this is a great section of text. Asthenia is a weakness from an illness. So this woman, 18 years before she saw Jesus, was fine. And then a spirit got in her body, and she was sick for 18 years. Then she ran into Jesus at the synagogue. And this one was the spirit that gets into your joints. She had sun cupto, which is kyphosis. She's all bent forward like hunchback. Had a hump in the back. <clears throat> and uh, should not this woman be a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has bound? She didn't have kyphosis or arthritis, Jesus said it was a spirit. So that spirit had kyphosis and he got in your body and now you, 18 years later, your back is humped over. You could have scoliosis or lordosis. It depends on what the demon has. Demons can only give you what they have. So if this spirit has scoliosis, he can't give you cancer. Right. So a scoliosis demon will give you a little S to your spine. Looks like a little S thing. This one here, it bends forward. Boom. These rheumatoid demons are terrible. They morph your joints into something you can't even believe. Okay? And once they're removed, they're, they straighten back up. Any kind of sickness thing. If they have it, they can give it to you. So, Brother Mike, with the kyphosis and scoliosis of that nature, um, generally speaking, is there a root cause? Is it bitterness or is it hatred? Or is it fear? You got to take it on a case by case basis. Yeah. What she's talking about is how the demon get in, which is what we always try to figure out. Sometimes you can't. But it's usually through child abuse, it's usually through extreme disappointment as a child, it's usually through abandonment, something like that as a kid. It kicks in, door opens. He moves in. It's usually a rejection demon. That's how it starts. The bitterness, the bitterness, the rejection, the abandonment. Right. That opens the door up. It's yeah. Forgiveness. Close it opens up the door. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I like how you said that a spirit can only give you what it has. Well, Correct. But like you were saying, I'm thinking, okay, well, wouldn't it be beautiful if people believe that? Only the Holy Spirit can give you what He gives. Amen. Now, you just take that. Right. You know what I mean? It, 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 yeah. It's profound, and it changes your whole mentality of renewing the mind. I can only do, or I can only say, or I can only believe what the Holy Spirit has already given me. So how am I speaking over myself, and how am I speaking over other people? Mm -hmm. That begins the manifestations of your want well, better. Could you say, if, I, if the Holy Spirit can only give me what He has, well, wow, I mean, that really blows your mind. It really opens up your mind to, uh, okay, there's nothing really impossible for me to do. As long as I, have a, I mean, you keep it in a confinement, though, you know, but I'm saying that it opens up your mind to really believe in something that God has really created inside of you to walk out and be the person who you were created to be that, than other than being, I'm not that good. I don't think myself that good. Or I'm never going to be that person. God is contrary saying no. I've given you me. So it really changes your whole, changes your life. You can grab it, hold on to it, and regardless of what the world and what other people are telling you, you're seeing yourself through God's eyes. Amen. Well, let's ramp this up now. Uh, these spirits, they target your brain here. And as you know, your brain uh, controls everything else. So here's your speech centers, huh? right? 
Uh, your eyes. Back your head. Okay, so if a demon targets here and he strikes this portion of your brain, you're probably not going to have a speech impediment. You're going to have a visual impairment. Correct? And then here's, here's the gate, orthopedic problems, and so on, right? Here's your hearing section back under here. Okay, so the spirit would then target that area of the person's brain, right? So if I'm a Parkinson's spirit, I'm going to be hitting here and here. If I'm an Alzheimer demon, I'm going to be going somewhere in here. The, the area they want the most is here. Yeah. This is your processing center and how you make your decisions and they want to control how you make decisions. They want you to decide what they want, not what you want or know what God wants. Yeah. They want the opposite. Okay. Actually, I just uh, did some research, but alcohol takes out that potent front part. So that's why you have the inhibition. There's nothing to stop what's going on. You can just take this front part out. That's right. Any chemical you use <clears throat> affects the whole thing, correct? Mm -hmm. Medications, chemicals of any kind. And it wouldn't make sense why they attack your speech because in the Bible, God only talks about watch your mouth. Right. Watch how you speak. Ooh. Right. So if a, guy, if a guy's a chronic cursor, mm -hmm. F this and F that, and he bifurcates words and puts in a swear word, Blasphemy demons get in there and they cuss in a storm, yeah. like drill sergeants. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. The, med the medical industry says that the number one cause of Alzheimer's is loneliness in older adults. Loneliness? Yeah. No. It kind of would make sense if it's a spirit of rejection. Would that be the rejection demon, that makes sense. Yeah, but these demons here damage the brain and they can't remember anything anymore. But it takes a long time to do it. It takes them years to accomplish it. So then if we go to from here, we'll then illustrate it this way. Then we go to here and illustrate it. The spirits in the brain. <clears throat> uh, the maniac of Gadara in Mark 5, you see the symptoms here pretty clear. He was homeless. He was, had supernatural strength. He had... Uh, uncontrolled rebellion and uh, he was uncontrollable, the mazo, he was out of control, which is what demons love. They want, they want you to go nuts. They like that. They're in control. They're not out of control. They, chaos to them is calm. It's chaos to us. See? Not them. They're fine with it. BLM riot, Antifa riot, they're cool as cucumbers. They know everything that's going on. The people are running around crazy. They aren't. They know exactly what they're doing. The guy, uh, chronic insomnia, chronic depression, severe clinical depression, right there. He was a what? Cutter. Catacopto means someone who's self-mangling themselves, a cutter, a just someone who damages their own body. Boom, 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 boom. Seen that one? About that. What? Is it a lot of pagan religions basically yeah. practice mm -hmm. that? Well, that's a little different. That's, that's a sacrificial uh, method of worship. That's more like idolatry. Self-flatulation is different. This guy's doing it because the demons are killing him, using him to kill himself. Self-flatulation for the, some god is not, you're killing yourself, you're 
It's an act of worship. This is not an act of worship. This is a mental illness of self-destruction. Exactly. And so when the people came out to see the guy that was possessed with the devil, remember the Bible said he had a legion in there? That was a military term, legion. And it was between 4,200 and 6,000 demons. Now, I don't, I've never really uh, ministered to these kind of people that had 4,000 demons. You know, fortunately, not too many of them come to the deliverance center. If they do, I turn them over to Kelly. Uh, what happens is this, this guy's possessed, I mean, off, off the rack possessed. If this guy's out of my league, uh, I'd have to go resurrect Wigglesworth to get this one done. But anyway, the, the illustration I'm showing you here is they're controlling his mind. He's mentally ill. He's severely mentally ill. He can't control his mind. He can't control his body. And mental illness is, is at this level. Church people are at this level. They're not out of their minds. They, they do have their conscience working. They can listen. They can change. These people here, they can't change. They're gone. I think it also shows us the power of God. Yeah, shows us the power of God now. So, okay, well... The name, the power of the name of Jesus. Yes, it Yes. For the church to understand. For the church. Here for, I'm going to show you what my name will do. Yes. But, now, following up on that, you know, I, I don't mean to be a killjoy, but I don't teach this kind of stuff because I don't have that kind of anointing. What I'm, what I'm shooting for is a regular church, this one, and cleaning out this church and getting everybody healed at this church, okay? I'm not looking for the maniac of Gadara Sunday morning at the Movement Church. Okay? But his point is valid. This gives you the idea of the love of God. And if you have that kind of anointing, which, which I don't know anybody that does, you can get this, even this person will bow to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Amen. Like I believe it's coming, that that anointing is coming to Jesus and we will do greater works. I believe that we're going to see it. Up well, I hope so. But the point is, you've got to do it individually. Yeah. Okay, this isn't some theoretical, uh, the anointing's coming. No, that's crap. You get on your knees yeah. and you sacrifice to whatever anointing you want. Yeah. Okay, if you want that anointing, you've got to sacrifice more than the anointing I have. Yeah. Hello? It's yeah. it's, it's, Whatever you sow, that's what you will reap. Yes. The Holy Ghost will only give you what you have sacrificed for. Yes. It's, it's, yeah. it's like what you think. Uh, people say faith. Uh, faith doesn't move God. God has already moved. Faith moves you. Ooh. Yeah, and you're, it's, it's your responsibility to develop your faith. And everybody develops it at a different level. That's why people chase faith healers. Because this particular faith healer has a gift of healing, so everybody that's sick runs to them. Okay? This guy's got prophecy. Oh, let's run over there. See? No. You could have anything that you'd be willing to sacrifice for. But God's gifts are priceless, and they're not just tossed around like candy. God can't give you a gift unless he can trust you with it. You don't hand your keys to your third grader, do you? Does she drive? I don't think so. God doesn't give these massive gifts. Boom! There it is. What's that? No, no, no. Oh, whoa. You've got to renew your mind. You've got to demonstrate that you can be trusted. Uh, Joseph had to start out in a well. He had to be beaten and trained for years. Yeah. To be, and then he became the prince of Egypt. Yeah. You don't do this overnight. Yeah. What's wrong with you? Right. Come on. <laughs> Somebody's going to have to pay the price. Yeah. But what we're doing here is we want them to pay this little price today and just repent and get delivered today. Let's get delivered today. Yeah. See, every race has a starting line. Yeah. Well, I want to be... Like Wigglesworth. Beautiful. Start here. 
like where Wigglesworth did. He started down in the gutter, then he crawled up to the rat trap, then he went over here to the junkyard, then he, boom! See, it's a process of learning and growing. You don't fall into these things. I'd like the gift of healing, please. Click. Ah, got it. Hey, stop. This isn't YouTube. It's God's holy word. You got, God's got to trust you. And then what you talked about earlier, the renewing of the mind. Renewing of the mind, yes. Renewing your mind, you will not walk out what God has called you. Yeah. Yeah. You're teaching next time, sir. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you're not going to run into these very often, but I am illustrating this concept of brain demons here. And they found him sitting there, clothed in his suffernail. He was sane again. What was causing the insanity? Spirits. Yeah. Not a bad diet, not hormones, mm -hmm. not a cholesterol problem. Spirits. Remove the spirits. What kind of spirits? Insanity spirits. Demons give you what they have. I'm insane. Now you're insane. Remove the insanity. Clothed in his right mind. I got a temper problem. Remove that spirit. Now I'm calm. Hi, sweetheart. Well, you're a changed person. Well, yeah, I had a person in there who hated your guts. You know, marriage counseling, I do a lot of it. This person's demon hates that person. And the person over here thinks they're talking to that person when they're actually talking to their demons. So they get mad at that person. So now the system can't be broken. It's going to fail, and I'm, not, I'm headed for a divorce. To save the marriage, all I got to do is show them who's talking here. Your spirits are talking to him. Yours are talking to hers. Why is that? Well, then I go down and find out how they got in. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. Now, her dad yelled at her all the time when she was two to eight. Okay, those spirits got in there. You know, she's got a problem with men. She's afraid. She's got, oh, once this spouse understands how this spouse works, you can have some compassion on them. Yeah, it's true. And those individuals with mother issues, you can see them be abusive to their mother or their sisters or whoever. Same demons traveling right down the tree. Same spirits. And then uh, you run into this other world that, that I'm in a lot, but most people are not in. These demons are on steroids. <laughs> They're very difficult to get out. Some of them are dangerous. Uh, a lot of the uh, mass shootings now are clicked in by this or trans. Notice that? Boom. If your schizophrenia has a violent component to it, these are commonly violent. Very commonly violent. If you're married to somebody with borderline, you're going to get beat up. They're going to have freaked out temper issues. And again, those are the demons attacking you in that person. They're using the person to get to you. Can some of that be caused by the drug and alcohol, though, and the fact the person stops to go see that go away? Or do those demons stay in even after you they get rid of the alcohol? No, the drugs and alcohol allows them, more of them, to get in. Okay? But once you stop using, the demons are still in there, so they always relapse. Yeah, right. Over and over. That's where the healing, deliverance, and the repentance come from. Right. So, I, I, I teach at a lot of rehab places. Are they, are they getting rehabbed? To a certain level. But... It's easy to rehab somebody when you're in the center and you're in a controlled environment. So yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, I'm running the rehab program and you got to go to chapel three times a week and you got to have a Bible study three times and blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, that's good. You need to have that. Well done. But the program is only six months. It's only nine months, okay? Yeah. Guess what's happening? Hell is coming to breakfast. Yeah. You got to get discharged. 
You want to see the fear of God in somebody? Discharge somebody from a rehab center. You mean I got to live like a human being? You got to be kidding. I got to get a job. Yeah, you got to you got to get a job. <gasps> Elizabeth, you got to pay bills. You've got to go back to your family. Back to my family. <laughs> Prison, jail, and rehab, light duty. You want to see something tough? Come out here and live. I can't believe he said that. Okay, so these are demons on steroids. They're very difficult to get out. Don't get discouraged if you run into these people. Just go to the next one. I have a miracle list. You can send me an email. I'll send you the mental illness miracle list. That's your step-by-step -step guide to take these through that process. It shows you how to do it. Click, click, click. But it's very, very hard. Because all of these people have rebellion demons. And they don't listen. They listen for a little bit. And then they fight back. You got to have the patience of Job to work with these people. I've been working with them for years, and maybe 10%, 15% get totally delivered. It's a low percent, even with me doing it. I've had years of experience. And the problem is, you can't get him to stay with the protocol because the rebellion demon goes only so far, then he explodes. No! Yeah. Are those people also not like under witchcraft in a way? Well, they could be because if you'll look up the family tree, let's take schizophrenia, for example. If you go up the family tree here, somebody's in witchcraft. Grandpa, great-grandpa, grandma, somebody's got witchcraft and it came down, boom, schizophrenia. And the rebellion could be an authority figure. Yeah. They have a really bad because they don't spread the Exactly. That's uh, coming from. Yes. Yeah. Rebellion demons do not take orders. They give them. And they lie all the time. You know, every addict is a pathological liar. <laughs> Are you going to rehab? Yes. Are you going to quit? Yeah. Are you going to stop using? Yeah. They've lied so much, it's just like another thing. Yeah, so, so if I'm counseling an addict, I'm very firm with them and very truthful because addicts, even if they're stupid, are street smart and they can spot a phony two blocks away. And if they sense I got any phoniness, they'll try to manipulate me. So they need hard truth. Walking it yeah, then they got to walk it, which is tough. Again, the demons will fight you every step of the way. So if you get this, this one here, this is all. For example, you could work with somebody here today. Uh, you got bad feelings about your mother. Yeah. You'd be willing to repent of that. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. Somebody was mentally ill. You got to take each thought captive. Yes. Now what did you say about your mother? What, did, what were you thinking? What was the thought? And sometimes I have to go down and audit every thought. And they have to repent of that thought. Mm. See, a non-mentally ill person can repent of a concept. Yeah. I'm bitter toward my aunt, whatever. A mentally ill person? What, were you, what did you exactly, what were you thinking about her? What was that thought? What the, exactly did you, I got to take each one, oh, you got to the patience of Job to do it. And they got to repent of each one. And they got a legion of demons, so you take them through deliverance, you get this layer out. Got a layer out. Oh. What about these layers? Well, let's start over. We've got to go to that layer. Then that one. So.
So if this is your bag, <laughs> which, <laughs> which it probably isn't, go to the next one. Don't get bogged down on somebody with schizophrenia. Go to the next one and get somebody else delivered who will listen to you, okay? Don't get wrapped up in this. But these are the extremes of mind control. Spirits in the brain. Wow, in command. Why? Could be family tree, it could be severe sin. Alcohol, drugs, see. These kind of people, witchcraft, thank you. Somebody with this background, if you look in their background, you'll be shocked. There it is. Beep, 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 beep. Somebody real quick. I got delivered from schizophrenia. I was practicing witchcraft, and the Lord delivered me, so I just want to thank Jesus that. You don't have to be, but you can deliver from that. Witchcraft's a horrible sin. Horrible. Sin, because uh, you putter around with new age and witchcraft, you'll, see, you'll hear somebody talking in your head. And you'll hear somebody in your head talking to somebody else in your head. And once that happens, you're in deep trouble. That means they're in. That's not one Ouija board trip. That's coming back. That's trying to, uh, what's her name? Teresa Caputo. Seen her on TV now? Is she out in California? She's, yeah. Yeah, she's, in, she's the next big psychic. She's got her own TV show now. She gives you readings and, and uh, uh, I, your dad's saying that he loves you and he's sorry he got in the accident. And, uh, see, she, she's gone. She's going to die. Witchcraft's the worst thing you can get into. Oh, that's, that's, that's a death knell. Okay. How are we doing so far? Nobody seems to be mad at me. I've only lost four or five, so that's okay. <laughs> now let's go to another common spirit you'll run into at every church and every, all the people have them virtually. Fear demons, phobo spirits, okay? <clears throat> now there's two types, and they work beautifully together, almost like dancing the waltz. One of them is fear demons, the other one is coward spirits, and here they are in this verse. Everybody has this verse memorized, right? Okay. God has not given us a fear, spirit of fear. This was mistranslated. It should have been cowardice. God has not given us a spirit of cowardice. He's talking to Timothy because Timothy was a super-powered Holy Ghost preacher, and then he started to drift off, and his gifting started to drop. So Paul jumped in and tried to get him to stir up the gift that's in you, and... Timothy, you were here, now you're down here. we got to get you back up here. Let's go, boy. See? And he's saying here, by you pulling back, that's a coward spirit. See that? And he says, you didn't get a coward spirit from God. You have dunamis, supernatural power of the Holy Ghost. You have unconditional love, agape, and you have a sane, sound Mind. That's what you have, Timothy, not a coward spirit. Yeah. See? So the way that works is the fear demon, phobos, where we get our English word Phobia. phobias, gives you the initial panic or the shock of it. Boom! It shoots at you. And you feel this. The fear spirit will actually, they usually hang around in this area. And they're usually in your tummy or upper stomach, down in here, or chest area. You feel this sense of kind of taking your breath away. And then the coward spirit takes over next and he tells the person, don't go for help. You're going to get embarrassed. Just sit quietly. Don't do anything. You'll be okay. See? This one shocks them. This one causes them to retreat. And they work together like kissing cousins. They're always together. Shock and withdraw, shy, introvert. People who are shy and introvert, they have Delia spirits, coward spirits. I can't speak publicly, I can't say anything. I don't want to do that. It's not my place. That's a Delia spirit. Uh, scared of something, oh my God! That's a fear demon attacking you. Boom. 
And here's how it works. Uh, these spirits attack your mind and they put these thoughts in your mind. All kinds of thoughts, every kind of thought. Paul called them a fiery dart. So I'm going to put the thought in your mind. You're too old to serve God. Yeah, a demon can actually put that thought in her mind. Can I point out that you have a book on the planet of spirits? Yeah, that's, uh, all this is covered in that book, Plan of Spirits. So, so if, she, if she accepts that thought, mm -hmm. that thought becomes hers. Mm -hmm. And I, as a demon, transferred my thought to her. Now it's her thought. Mm -hmm. If I'm a cancer demon and I give you cancer, and the doctor says, you have cancer, and you say, I've got cancer, the demon transferred the cancer to her, reinforced by the doctor, and they both said she has cancer, she's going to die. If the cancer demon is removed, she can recover. Mm -hmm. If that thought is taken captive instantly, you're too old to serve God. No, I'm not. The thought and the yeah. power of the demon yeah. is destroyed. Yeah. I am stupid. Okay? Now, she may have an IQ of Einstein, but it doesn't matter. It's not what you have, it's what you believe. And the Bible talks about that. If she takes that thought captive, it dies on the vine right there. Boom. No, I'm not. That's why I never said I never said that I had I never said that I had cancer. Even when they gave me the diagnosis, I never even when I was relaying my testimony, I always said they told me that I had cancer. Right. I never said I had cancer. Right. Most people don't do that. Whatever the doctor tells them, that's what I got. That's what the Bible talked about in Amos three three. Talking to coming in agreement. Coming in agreement with it. Yeah. Yeah. You're not denying that, but it can't stay there. Right. And this, uh, when people say, well, you're old, then you come around and say, well, what does the Bible say? Well, the Bible will tell you, um, this body is health of a child, from your youth will get, that's God talking to you. Mm -hmm. So when a person says, no, I'm going to get old, you're going to get old. No, what, what does the Bible say? You know, those who take his scripture, his word, and you apply it to your life, that may happen for you, but it ain't going to happen for me. Right. It doesn't matter who's talking to you, whether it's demons or God, it's who you believe. Yeah. Right. Right. It doesn't matter if God's talking to you. He talks to all kinds of people. They don't believe him. The only thing that matters is what you believe. Because you were walking. Right? Because Wigglesworth said it, didn't he? He said, I, I am not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm only moved by what I believe. So if you take the thought there, then she's not too old. She's not stupid. Uh, I've been in prison. I can't get a job. Oh, you, you just, the demon put the, th now you can't get a job. Yeah. Because you believed it. Right. The Holy Ghost can get a job like somebody falling off a log. Absolutely no problem. I don't care who you are. Somebody could have dug you up and you'll get your job. But if you said, I'm not going to get a job, then you are going to die in poverty and yeah. you will fail yeah. because you are the sum of what you believe. Yeah. Yeah. If you can believe yeah. all things. Yeah. So the lies come in here and there's billions of them it seems like. Good grief. It's unreal. Demons are unreal. How they keep track of this crap I'll never know. <laughs> But they put it in there. The thought comes in, stupid, ignorant, asinine, moronic, wicked, evil. It could be anything. But if I don't take it, they have no control over me. And Satan's number one job is to control your mind. Whoever gets the mind gets what? The rest of the person. That's what we do with Eve. Did God really say? He told Eve that. 
He attacked her through her mind. In her mind. Okay. So the fiery dart is a negative thought. They're easy to track if you know what a negative thought is. Okay. Mentally ill people don't, but a regular church person, they do know the difference between a positive thought and a negative thought. And what I said to her and her were negative thoughts. Did you catch that? Oh, we got some people here with discernment. A negative thought, never from God, because he never uses negative thoughts to help people. So you can discern them instantly if it's negative. My husband's cheating on me. He's late for work. Oh, who put that thought in her mind? Okay. Okay. He probably is cheating on you. Because if you keep saying that to him and he's not, he'll eventually do it. But it started when they put the first thought in. The planting the seed of doubt. Yeah. If you if you keep receiving thoughts, lies, and you believe them, your entire life becomes a satanic dog and pony show. And eventually, as you're mentally ill, you become detached from reality, suffering from dissociative schizophrenia and so on. But at this level where we're working with them, we can save them from that. Because if you get them before that happens, that will never happen. You will know the truth and the truth will... Lies always bring people into bondage. Truth sets them free. And I want to warn you, you know, if you become that kind of a person, uh, you're not going to be that popular. Because people in our society live in delusions and lies and they like it there. Okay. But the people that will receive truth are eligible to be free. How'd that go? 98% of the planet is under Satan's control. About 2% is not. And here's how it works. a process. You know, like I said, a thought comes in. Boop. It starts here. A spirit puts a thought in there. It's usually a negative thought, but it could be a, a lie of some kind or a false belief or something. Have you ever met at your church Bible thumpers that can quote the Bible left and right and their personal life is jacked up? Yeah. Okay, those are, those are familiar spirits. They're religious demons and they love to help you learn the Bible, memorize the Bible, and spout off with God's word. <laughs> you quoting Bible, by the, but as long as you give them this part of your life, they will let you have that part. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Because you have no anointing, it's not going to help anybody. The Lord said this, blah, 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 blah. And it just tanks. No anointing. What good does the word of God do you? Nothing. Everybody reads the Word of God, doesn't do a bit of good. Jehovah's Witnesses have their own Bible. They read the, Mormons read the Bible. Everybody reads the Bible, doesn't do them any good. Only the anointed Word works. If the anointing is on the Word, anything can happen. Miracles. Just reading the Bible doesn't do any good. This has got to get here. This, this is not. If anybody's ever sick, they never call a Bible scholar. Why? They're useless. <laughs> okay. If they're sick, they find somebody's grandma who knows how to pray. You get grandma with a GED over a Bible scholar any day of the week. I'll take grandma every single time. I don't need a Bible scholar. Give me somebody who knows how to pray. What grade are you in? I finished sixth grade. Will you pray for me? Come on. I don't need a crack pot with a PhD. Yeah. Excuse me. Stop it. Right. We need somebody who's got the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Right. Power. Right. God. 
That's all that I'm not saying Bible scholars are bad people. I listen to Bible scholars. I read some of their stuff. But if you need something in life, you're not going to a Bible scholar. A lot of them don't believe it. They're going to go with somebody who knows how to pray and can get a hold of God. A lot of, a lot of them don't believe it. A lot of them are split. That's a problem. Um, I know that I went to um, a school for that, and I hated theology. It's like, oh. the, power, the power of God and his love that makes all the difference. He went to school and you flunked out? No, I didn't flunk out, actually. You finished it? Yeah, I practiced as a therapist for years. Oh, you did? In the ministry. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I wouldn't tell too many people that. Yeah. But she overcame it. <laughs> See? <clears throat> yeah, that's right. Hey, chat, if you don't believe me, how are we doing our time here? Am I blowing all our time yet? What time is it? 12 10. 12.10. Oh, shoot. Let me get going here. Okay, uh, quickly, it starts as a thought, and then if you receive the thought, the demons attack your soul and you have an emotion. So if a fear thought comes in here, the, and you receive it, they'll attack your emotion, and you, you'll feel fear. As soon as your emotions support the thought, it becomes real to you. Then your behavior goes negative. Yeah. Okay? And if you keep going through this process, you will develop what we call a habit. I got a habit of doing something. Could be anything. And then the habit turns into a... Yeah. And then, yes. now you can't stop it. When you get to this level here, they're out of control. Bob, why don't you change? They can't. It could be any one of these things. You know, the demons want to get you addicted to anything. Anything at all. These are the big five. And as soon as you get, they've got you addicted. Again, they're control freaks. Addiction is their control and you're out of control. And that's our goal. You can see Satan taking over the country and wow, look at it, it's springing up. The total domination of Satan now. Gambling's legal, pot's legal. Who would ever thought that would happen? Oh my God. Well, that's enough of that. Okay, now I'll share this with you and we'll conclude, okay? As I was saying, here's how Satan controls the world. It's right in this verse. If our gospel is hid, that's his main goal. Yeah. It's hid to those people who are Apollo meat, being ruined is yeah. what that means. In whom the God of this age, I own, that's Satan, has blinded the minds, mistranslated, thoughts, na'ama, thoughts, mm -hmm. of those who do not, who won't believe God's word. That's how he gets you. Mm -hmm. He puts the seed of doubt in your mind, and then they don't believe. Mm -hmm. And that's how he controls the whole planet. Yeah. Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, politics, Medicine, viruses. Anything. Hey, what the scripture, what is it? Psalm one thirty nine? He says, My thoughts towards you. So that's a guy that's renewed his mind. Most Christians have not renewed their minds. Yeah. Now, how do you know if you're infected with spirits? Really, really easy. If you have something about you that is out of your control, that's a spirit. Emotional, mental, thinking pattern, behavior pattern. It's usually your emotions. Mm -hmm. Demons love emotions. Because that's how he can control the person. Gives them a negative thought, and the emotion makes the thought real. 
That's how he dominates you. Because I know women are more, generally speaking, more emotional than men, right? So does he control women with emotions more than men? Does he control them a different way, usually? Or? Well, it, it controls anybody who is what we call a carnal Christian, is somebody who feels too much. Anybody who is being led by their emotions is easy to manipulate. Honestly, since you know you bring that up, that's the spirit of division between the genders. Yeah, because we know we know that there's men that are emotional, women that are emotional. Oh yeah. It's narrative. Oh yeah. You know, you're in the mind of Christ, you meant to crush these narratives. Yeah. And so it's like. It's narratives caused by lying spirits. Yes, it is, it, exactly. And like you're saying too, I agree with you. A man with the Holy Spirit, because he's going to make a difference between a man, a man without the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. A man with the Holy Spirit, you walk into a situation, because I'm speaking from experience, um, the Holy Spirit will show you something, and you will start crying for that person. And, but God is using you to relate to that person where you're, you're feeling, you're actually feeling that. Right, right. The person doesn't have the Holy Spirit will just walk up to and just be nonchalant, but he's showing you God's love for the person where you have empathized for that person. Okay, you know, this is what God is telling me about you. And this is how much he loves you, what he wants to do in your life. Right. That's what the man with the Holy Spirit, without the Holy Spirit, you're gonna be like, hey, look, get out of here, you don't need to go get with it. Well, what they're like is we call them carnal Christians. Yeah. Those who don't have, aren't led by the Spirit, they're carnal Christians. And then they're fleshly. That's 90% of the church. I think what I've seen from like, walking through you know, my life is people of the world are going to answer to what that is. So for men in the world, they're less emotional. Women of the world, they have more emotion. But I can take that into sitting... I can learn what the world wants to teach me, or I can choose what my father wants to teach me, which is exactly what you were saying. So I've always said the world gives me their knowledge. Yeah. And I've looked at it and I'm like, it looks like garbage to me, so I'd rather know what my father says yeah. and what he teaches me rather than what the world teaches me. Because that's just what the world does. They, just, they have their own way of teaching, it's what the devil wants them to teach. So I'd rather just go with what God says, and most of the time. It's hard because you're going to see with women and with men, they're going to believe what they were taught. And they're either going to be taught by the father or going to be taught by the world. Oh, yeah. There'll be a lot of women that are going to be taught what she said. There'll be a lot of men that are taught, well, I can't have emotion because my father taught me not to have emotion. Yeah. But exactly. What God taught me was, what do you think breaks my heart more? My, the one who cries at my altar or the one who's standing back there with his arms crossed? Yeah. And I said, I want to be the one that cries at the ground. He said, that's the one that makes me cry. You get a guy filled with the Holy Ghost, they'll weep a bucket. I just had a counseling session two weeks ago. The husband sat there crying his eyes out, and she sat there like a statue. Honestly, Brother Mike, was when you were talking about like soupe and how um, that's where you're kind of the wounds of the emotion are hidden. And generally speaking, and I'm not saying 100%, women, and I don't necessarily mean just in the church, are usually more emotional than men. So I was wondering if that's the enemy using, because women are more nurturing by yeah. God's nature, right? Mm -hmm. If the enemy chooses to use emotions to attack women more than men. That was my question. That's exactly what happens. Any, he'll take advantage of anything he can get his hands on. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Women are more emotional than men, generally speaking, but, but they tend to be more spiritual. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, women are my favorite, by far. <laughs> Why? They're more, seem to be more sensitive to their spirit man and the anointing than men are. Yeah. But if, were, they, but if the man had a good relationship with the father, you also have that same emotion. Oh yeah. Right there, because it's all based on the relationship you have with your father. I think right. it depends too because of how, the, um, yeah. how our father made us. He made us different things. He made women for a certain thing and he made men for a certain thing. Not saying mm -hmm. that you can just be one way or anything like that. It's just, yeah, it's a relationship with the father. But at the end of the day, as you always say, at the end of the day, 
Yeah. It's our design. It's yeah. Really I was only speaking in generalities, yeah. not specifics. Yeah. Like I said, that couple I had, this guy yeah. had a massive anointing, crying his eyes out. She was deader than a box of bricks. <laughs> you can't, everybody has to be taken individually. Yeah. That's what I've can't generalize anything. So yeah. People, just right. Okay, we're going to dismiss the meeting, and if you need special prayer, or if you think you might be oppressed by spirits, I want you to stay here. What time is it? Okay, I want you to stay here so we can pray for you. You can be delivered today, okay? Father, uh, this has been a pleasant surprise for me. Wow, what a great meeting. Everybody seemed interested and they were, everybody was nice. Unbelievable. And so thank you for this church. It's been a great experience for me, but uh, I'm not satisfied. I, I want you to, to help someone. And that's all I really care about is you helping somebody. And I am not able to help them. And since I'm not able to help anybody, and I don't have anything. I got to rely on you to do it because you got everything. You got it all. The Holy Ghost has everything. And today is your day to help people at the Movement Church. That's all I care about on this planet right now, right here, right this second. So, Lord, I'm going to dismiss the service and anybody who needs prayer is going to get healed today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Uh, you are dismissed. And thank you for coming. I hope we're invited back. Or hope we get to come back. I like it here. That's confirmation. All right. If you're being oppressed by spirits, you come down here and see me right now. We'll pray for you. We're going to be here for another 30 or 40 minutes. Okay? Come down here and see me. <clears throat> thank you. Oh. You met one on I think you heard that so many. Mm -hmm. You met her at the No, she's from Yeah. Mm -hmm. I met her from Chanel. Yeah. Hey. Good to see you. Thank you. Stay here. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody needs prayer? If you need to leave, you're free to go now. All right. If you used to be in witchcraft, if you were molested as a child, uh, if you were beaten as a child. You picked up spirits, okay? If you've been in jail or prison, you picked up transfers. That's a, a demon factory in prison, a factory of demons. If you were molested as a child or beaten or you had uh, chronic verbal abuse, okay? The number one demon in America, come over here. Okay. Number one demon in America is the spirit of rejection. And he's always prevalent in societies that have broken families. A lot of divorces, a lot of breakups. The rejection demons get in when you're a kid. They get in when you're a kid. They get into your brain and they ruin your self-worth. They cause you to hate yourself. They cause you to criticize yourself. They teach you that you're not worthy that uh, God doesn't care about you, that he's not listening to you, that he doesn't love you. It's all a pack of lies. Every single thing he says is a lie. It's all lies. And he got in because somebody yelled at you or beat you or molested you or abandoned you. Something like that happened to you. And that was his door opening. He opened. And once he gets in, he stays with you until you die. Unless he is removed. And that's why deliverance is so important for the church because Bible study and prayer and things like that usually do not remove demons. Deliverance was a separate ministry of Christ, was it not? Yeah, and it was more than prayers and Torah studies, right? Deliverance, okay? Anybody here have a rejection demon from childhood? See those hands? See that? They're the most prevalent spirit in America is a rejection demon, right? And you can get them from verbal abuse, chronic criticisms, abandonment, divorces. Kids are very sensitive to that and they just pick everything up as a kid, like a sponge, right?
Yeah, for example, this gal's got a really bad one. Come up here, sweetheart. There it is. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, girl. Close your eyes there. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. <clears throat> Close your eyes now. Let's usher in the Holy Ghost here. He's already touching the scalp. Thank you, Jesus. Relax. First thing you got to do is relax. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just relax your mind and your body for a second. Lord, the Holy Ghost doesn't like to be rushed. I'll just give him a second here. If you've got any secret sins in there, you just confess them right now, and they'll just go. The blood of Christ can remove any sin, no matter how bad it is. Any kind of sin. Nothing stands before him. God, I ask you to forgive me for my attitude, my vocabulary, my cursing, my bitterness, my defensiveness, my rebellion. I ask you, Lord, to remove every parent curse off of every person here at the altar. If they rebelled against their parents, criticized them, fought back against them, a curse fell on them, and I want that curse broken right now. The Bible says that if you, thou shalt not dishonor thy mother or thy father. If you did that to your parents, the demons had legal rights to take you even though your parents were 100% at fault. It was not qualified in the Bible. And just repent of it right now. Lord, I talked back to my mother. I talked back to her. I criticized her. There it is. There he is. Touching you right now. Here he comes. Thank you, dear. Spirit, you're coming out. I, I talked back to my mother and my dad, and I'm going to repent of it right now. Boop. I'm going to repent of it right now. And low self-esteem, shyness, introversion. People don't respect me. They talk down to me. That's that rejection demon. My dad was hard on me, really hard. And I was mad at him. And I said bad things about him. If you said bad things about your mom or your dad, you're going to repent of it right this second, aren't you? You're just going to repent of that. That fear spirit that got in there, that fear demon that got in there when you had a rough childhood. Remember the beatings? They were tough, weren't they? Yeah. Today those beatings are going to leave. Amen. They're going to come out in the name of Jesus. There you go. Thank you. Listen. Open your heart now. Thank you, Jesus. Open your heart. Come on now. Close your eyes. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Open your heart now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, dear Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now, Spirit, they came down here for prayer, and they want help, and you're going to lose control over them right now. They're repenting. They're repenting right now. You can't keep them if they repent. You know that. You know that. You know that. Okay, now my team's going to pray for you now. You ready? No spirits are going to come right out of there. Ready? Come out now. Come out. Take a big breath and blow. Give me a big breath. Breathe out of your mouth. Come out, spirit. Come out of there right now. Come out right now. Go ahead. Come out right now. Come out of there. Come out right now. Come out of my body right now in the name of Jesus. Leave my body right now. Rejection, low self-esteem, self-hatred. Leave my body right now. Come out of there right now. There they are. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out there. Yeah, don't you tell me no, devil. Come out of there right now. No, I know you took her when she was long. I know you I know he took her. Now come out of there right now. Don't tell me no. Come on out. Sixty years of that monster being in there is long enough. Sixty years is long enough. Come out, you spirit of infer there he is right there. It's a fear demon. That's a fear demon. There we go. Come out of there right now. Quickly. Come out of my body right now and stop blocking my ministry. Stop blocking my anointing. Come out of my body right now. Come out of my body right now. Stop blocking my anointing and stop blocking my ministry. Come out of there right now. Come on, Spirit, come out. There he is right there. Come out right now. Come on, here he is. Come out right now. That's him right there. Come out right now. Hold that. Come out right now. Go. Come out of that body right now. Come on. 
quickly. Come on, quickly. Come on, body, right now, quickly, you demon. Come on there. Hold this. Thank you, Jesus. Come on in Jesus' name. Come on there right now. I want all my demons from my dad out of my body right now. Breathe out of your mouth. Come out, devil. I command you to come out of me. There you go. I command you to come out of me right now. I command you to come out of me right now. Say that. I command you in the name of Jesus. Come on. Come out. There he is right there. Come out right now. That's him right there. Come out right now. Come out. Come out. Tell him to come out. I command you in Jesus' name to come out. I command you to come out. Come out of there. Come on out. Come out right now. Say that. Come out in Jesus' holy name. Come out and use your authority. Come out of my body now. Come out of my body right now. Come out right there. He is. Take a breath and blow. Come right out. Come out. Come out of her. Come out of her right now. Come on quickly. Come on. There it is. Let your tears go. Come on. Here he comes. Thank you, Jesus. Every ugly man that ever touched me, all the bad men the devil sent me over the years, every one of them, all them transfers from bad men. Come on. There he is. Touching you right now. That's him right there. Come on, sweetheart. Holy Spirit on you right now. Let's go. Get, get him out of here. All the ugly men. All the bad husbands, every one of them, every bad man I ever slept with. Come out of there. Come out of there, you rapist. Come out, you rapist. There he is right there. Here he comes. Here he comes. Out. Come on, sweetheart. I command you to come out of my body right now. I command you to go. Spirit, I bind your power, you demon of rebellion. I command you to come out. Let go in Jesus' holy... Oh, you, you fear you get out of my body right now. Come out now, quickly. Go now. Go now. Come out quickly. Every spirit from my husband. Go. Every spirit from my husband. Come out right now. Go. That's him right now. That's a fear spirit. Go. Come up and out right now. Hold that. Hold that, sweetheart. Come out right now. Hurry up. Demon of fear, I command you to come out of me. I've had you since I was six years old. Six years old. Come out right now. Six years old. Come out of there. Come out right now. Stop walking my anointing. I command you to lose me right now. I hate you. I command you to lose me. Go now. Come out. Get out of my body. Come out right now. Come on, sweetheart. Tell that fear demon to go. Come out of my body right now. Tell him. Tell him to go. Come on, sweetie. You spirit of rejection. You come out of there right to sell. And a girl. Let your tears go. Good. Thank you, Jesus. Spirit of food. Go. Using food as a comfort. Go. I bind your power. Come on my body right now. Every spirit I picked up by committing adultery when I was young. Go. Every one of them. Every one. Every spirit I picked up committing adultery when I was young must leave me right now. Come on out of there right now. Let's go. There it is. Let your tears go. Come on, sweetie. In the name of Jesus, come out. Come out right now. In the name of Jesus, come out right now. Quickly. Come out right now. Oh. I just get mad at him. Go. There you go. You get out of my body right now. Go. Verbal abuse. Rejection. Leave me now. Go. Go in Jesus' hold. Come out. Come out now. Come out in Jesus' name. Come out right now. What's wrong with that kid? What's wrong with him? Come out right now. Come out of that body right now. What's wrong with that kid? He's closed out. Rebellion. Oh, come on now. Son, just repent. Just repent. Just tell the Lord you're sorry for rebelling. You're sorry for doing things your own way. You're sorry for being your own boss. And you're resigning today. You're going to turn your life over to the Lord right now. You're going to repent in Jesus' holy name. And you're going to be a channel of miracles for God. You're going to have to empty yourself out. There it is. He's touching you right now. That's the Holy Ghost. Let your tears go quickly. Quickly. And that fear demon's got to come out of there. You're not supposed to leave here with that thing in there. Get out of that body. Come out of my mind. Come out. Come out of my mind. Come out of my mind. Come out of my mind. Hurry up. Look, I have the anointing. You can't stay in there anymore. You come out of my body right now. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out demons. 
Meat and cheese. You got gum in your mouth? I don't know, but I'm not perfect. I no. Come on now. <laughs> and we're going to get it out. You gotta get him out of there. Right? You're supposed so to be healing people with these hands. Him. Come on, sweetie. Forgiveness for me. Let's go. No. That's your anointing. Come on now. You're supposed to be putting your hands on people and seeing them healed. You know that. Stop stalling. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, I hate you. I hate you. I want you out of my body right now. Every spirit from my childhood, every spirit from my crazy parents, come out of my body right now. You get out of there in the name of the Lord. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out. You got gum in your mouth? You will not see my future in the name of Jesus. Yeah, take a breath and blow. Ready? Come out, devil. Come out right now. Come on out. Come out right now, quickly. Come out right now, quickly. Get out of my body. Every spirit from my dad, every spirit from abuse, every spirit from being criticized as a child, every demon from being bossed around and told what to do, talked down to, I repent of it right now. Let go, Satan. Let go. Let go of me, Satan. Let go of me, Satan. Hey, how do you get in there? I never I don't know, but I can breathe a lot better. You'll never leave her. You can? You speak in tongues? Yeah. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Louder. You got a shy spirit? Are you shy? She is lost in the process. Are you shy? Are you shy? Yeah. Okay, go ahead and repent. Whatever Jesus did, Lord, for Lord, Jesus gives him. I know that wasn't him. I'm not taking an offense to my brother. Lord, he is doing what he spoke things that weren't true. He spoke things that weren't true. Okay, ready now. Speak in tongues loud. Louder. At a girl. Just like that, loud. Good, good, good. Hey, you speak in tongues? You speak in tongues? Go ahead. Loud. No, louder. Louder. Loud. Louder. Loud. There you go. Good, good. Here it comes. Come out, devil. There they come. <clears throat> come out, Satan. You speak in tongues? Okay, go ahead. Real loud. Good girl. Louder. No, louder. Are you shy? Oh, go ahead and repent of it. Shy. Just repent of it. Hey, louder. Go. At a girl. Go. Good girl. 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 Spirit, come out of that body right now. I command you. You demon of rejection, come out of there quickly. Let her go right now. Come out quickly. Come on, come on. Let her go. 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 Let Somebody looking at you, who cares what they're looking at? Who cares? This is your life, not theirs. Who cares what they're looking at? Go. Atta girl, you're getting the anointing right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Let your anointing go. Hey, will you help her get her tongues going? Louder, louder. Come out of that body. Come out of her spine right now. I command you, loose her. Thank you, Jesus. You feel that? Thank you, Jesus. You feel that? It just jumped out of you. It just jumped out of you. <laughs> What's this guy doing? He's still, What's he doing? He's right now repenting for um, surface stuff like addiction. Okay. Like nicotine. When he's done, will you give me a wave? Okay. <laughs> Atta girl. Satan, lose your hold of the woman of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. 
Come on, sweetheart, you pray harder. You pray harder. Pray harder. Pray, there they come. Satan is your hold. Don't worry about manifestations. Okay? Don't worry about manifestations. Just get the spirits out. Get the spirits out. Get out of there. Come out. Come out. Come out. Come out. And let me go. Rama, heal that body. Heal that body. Heal. Come out of there, devil. Go. Uh oh. Uh oh. They're cutting. They're starting to come up. Come out of that body quick. Come out quickly. Come out quickly. Get your son. Your mom. Mom. What's wrong with him? You get out of that body right now. Did you hear me? What's wrong with him? Father, in the name of Jesus, every lust demon has to be bound today, and the disgrace of pornography must come out. There it is. Here he comes. There he is. The disgrace of pornography must leave this man of God. Stop blocking his healing ministry. Come out of that body right now. Come out of that body. Come out of that body right now. Come out of there, you lust demon. Get out of my body. I renounce lust and pornography. I renounce adultery. I renounce it in Jesus' mighty name. I claim my anointing in my future. Satan is your hold of me. Get out of there. Come up and out right now. Come out right now. He repent. She's been repenting right now. Yeah, but we're still, we're still, we're still blocked. Yeah, we're still. What's blocking it? He's desiring it at the same time that he's wanting to be done with it. Desire what? He's desiring it. He's in conflict. He still wants the the false pleasure, but he has it. Listen, son, ha half the people your age are going to end up dead in their thirties. Okay, this world has turned into a hellhole. You got to turn your life over to the Lord. These people are going to die and go to hell if you don't do something. Satan, lose your hold of the man of God. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Devil, come out of him. Devil, come out of him. Rebellion, anger, <laughs> lust, <laughs> porn. Come out of that body. Come out of his groin. <laughs> there it is. Let your tears go, son. Let your tears go. That's a Holy Ghost on you. Go ahead. Go ahead. The Holy Spirit's all over you. Take it. There it is. Keep coughing. Come out. There they come. Demons, come on out. There we go. Amen. There we go. Thank you, Jesus. You get out of my body right now. You let go of my anointing. You lose me. Come on, sweetheart. You get mad. You're shy. You're not supposed to be shy. No shies. You're supposed to be strong. Now push it. What's wrong with this gal? She has wounds from her her sister, oh, and what? she's saying she's gone through the whole freedom in Christ thing. Oh, but I'm trying to get her to see that there are wounds from sister. You got any bad feelings about your sister? Um, when she well, comes around. <laughs> so yeah, I feel better about the whole thing. But you had bad feelings about her. Well, yeah. Before, when she, what'd she, she do to you? To she gets angry and talks mean to me, but if currently, I, right now, yeah. oh, good. What's her name? Linda. Linda. Okay, now listen, you're being tricked because uh, your sister is a puppet. She's a what? Puppet. Puppet. Yeah. I tried to tell her not to worry. I just thought about it. Yeah. Her demons can't stand you. Yeah. Yes. Then they tell you to have bad feelings about her yeah. when they're doing it. Right. You're being played. The demons are laughing at you. They made, they've turned you into an idiot. You're not an idiot. You're an intelligent person. Go ahead and repent. 
Okay, you ready? Yeah. All right, every spirit, what's her name? Linda. Carol. Oh, Carol. Uh, her name? Sister's Linda. Linda, okay. Every transfer spirit that got in here from Linda must come out right now in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit. Go ahead. You ready? Close your eyes. Breathe out of your mouth. Add a girl. Every spirit from Linda, she's tormented me for years, and I command every spirit to come out. Now come out of her lungs, Linda. Linda, come out. Linda, come out. Linda, come out. Linda, come out. Come on. Linda, come out. Linda, come out. Yeah. Every spirit must leave me today. This is my day of freedom. I forgive everybody that stepped on me, used me as a doormat, wiped their feet on me, disrespected me, talked down to me. Every single one of them, I forgive them right now. Go. This is the last day to be dominated by Satan's pornography and lust. This is my last day, and I repent of it right now. And I command every one of these spirits of rejection, fear, and lust. All three of you, all three of you, come out right now. That should do it. Breathe out of your mouth. Go, devil. Come out right now. Come out right now. Quickly. Come out of there. Get out of my body. Come out of my body right now. Come out. Come out of my body right now. Come out. Come out of there. Get out. Just get mad at them. They've made a fool out of you and they turned you into a pervert. How dare you turn me into a pervert? I can't believe it. Trying to steal my destiny and my call from God. How dare you? I hate your guts right now in Jesus' mighty name. I command you out. I command you out. Come out now. Come out quickly. Come out now. I hate you. Did you hear me? Come out. Right now. Come out. Come out, I said. Right now. Come out. Come out of there right now. Quickly. Quickly. Get out of my spine. I command you to loose me in Jesus' holy. You're not done yet. You come out of there, you rotten devil. <laughs> She's not done. Come out of there, spirit. All these ugly men, that's it for me. All these ugly men, come out of my body right now. Every act of adultery, oral sex, come out of my mouth. Oral sex, come out. Come on out of there. Come out of that. All the perversion I got involved in when I was young, I want it out of me now. Every bit of it. You pervert. You pervert. Every per spirit of perversion. Every demon of perversion. You leave me tonight. You leave me now. Come on, sweetheart. You take command. These signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out demons. I can cast demons out of myself. Satan, come out of me. Say that, sweetheart. Satan, come out of me. Satan, loose your hold of me. When you pray, when you pray, you can pray quietly. You can pray quietly and God will hear you. He'll answer your prayers. That doesn't work with deliverance. Praying doesn't work with deliverance. Praying doesn't work with deliverance. Jesus never prayed over any demons. He took command. He took command. He, he got angry at them. He forced them out. He forced them out. You can't be shy around spirits. They're not shy around you. They hate your guts. They'll do anything to destroy you. You can't just come up and casually pray, dear Lord, deliver me from demons. It's not gonna work. It's not gonna work. Every Out. Dear Lord, heal me. No. Satan, 
I bind your power. I command you to come out. I charge you. That's how you do it. That's how Jesus did it. Don't tell me that's not how you do it. I read the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I can read, you know. Did it come out? No. Oh, what's what's in there? I don't know. <laughs> what's the symptoms? What do I have? Yeah, you have any symptoms of anything? Yeah, I I have pain in my jaw. Oh. I have peritonitis, so I did have it. It's on now. When you were younger, were you a critical person? No, I was born with a heart condition. Was your mother critical? Yes. My mom was a fear person. She was what? She's very fearful. Fearful, fearful. okay. Good, okay. Is she still alive? She died. What's her name? Joyce. Joyce, okay. Her name was Marjorie Joyce, but they called okay. her Joyce. Joyce, okay. Joyce must be in there. Yes. Now, you're a born-again Christian, and you don't need a mother and dad. Your Heavenly Father is your parent, and your mother's not supposed to be in there. Okay? And your mother was a critical person. Critical people sometimes end up shy and afraid to do things for fear they'll be criticized. And you're standing down here, you have the Holy Spirit, and you're a good woman of God, but you're not fighting for your life right now. Because your mother criticized you all the time, and you're afraid to be criticized. Your Heavenly Father has never criticized you one time in your entire life. Yeah. It's never happened. That's right. What? Yeah. And your mother had critical spirits. They transferred into here. Now, Lord, I ask you to give her the gift of hate right now. Hate for everything the devil done to her when she was young and how they molded her into the woman she is today and how you want to mold her into the woman of God she is to be tomorrow. And I'm asking you to give her some fire against her ugly upbringing, having to listen to her mother all those years. Carol, you come out of that body, right? Carol, you aren't supposed to be in there at all. You got to go. You got to go. You got to go. How'd that go? What's left in there? I don't know, something left in there. Yeah, what's it from? Self-hatred. Self-hatred because of me not being there for my kids. You not being what? Being there for my kids. Oh, okay. Prison out of my other kids' life. All right. Now, will you repent of that right now? God forgave you for that, didn't He? Yes. Okay. That's it. It's over. If God forgives you. It doesn't exist anymore. You never were a bad parent. Now that critical spirit in your brain, come on. Stop criticizing her. Stop running her down. Stop telling her she was a rotten mother. Stop telling her she was no good. Stop telling her she was a failure. Stop telling her she was a stinking jailbird and a convict. Come on, that body right now. I cast that critical spirit out of me right now in Jesus' holy name. Come out now, right now. Quickly come out. Quickly. Jesus. Heal now, heal now, Lord. Heal now. Sadness and misery, I command you to come up and out. Sadness and misery, come out in Jesus' name. There they are. There it is. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. Come out there right now. There it girl. Let your tears go. Let your tears go. Come out of my body right now. Hurry up. Every demon from jail. You jailbird, come up. You jailbird, come up. Come on, get out of that body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There it is. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Come on. There they come. Come out of that body right now. Come out of that body right now. Hurry up. Let's go. Let's go. Hurry up. Come out of there right now. Satan, lose your hold of her. Come out of my tummy. There it is. Keep coughing. He's coming up right now. Here he comes. Come on. There he comes. Keep coughing. Come on out, devil. 
Come on there, devil. Come on there. There it is. There he goes. There he goes. Satan, I command you to let your hands off of me. Satan, I command you to loose me right now. Say that. Devil, I command you to loose me. Get out of my stomach. Come out of my vagina. Every ugly man that ever touched my body, come out right now. Come out there. Go. Come out of my body right now. Get out of my body right now. Come out of there right now. Come on, sweetheart. Just fight. Just fight, sweetie. Come out right now. In the name of Jesus. Okay, come out. There they go. Come out right now. Grief and misery and sadness. Grief and misery and sadness. Anger and bitterness and sin. I command. I bind your powers. I command you to go in the name of Jesus. I command you to go in the name of the Lord. Get out of there. Go. Come out of there. Go. Come out right now. Quickly. Come out quickly. Go. Come on. Hey, you speak in tongues? Go ahead. Louder. Louder. Get a girl. Here, stand up. Get a girl. Stand up. Stand up. Good. Louder. Get a girl. There it is right there. Anointing fall. Thank you, Jesus. There it is. There you go. Thank you, Jesus. Oh. Holy Ghost, move. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. What's wrong with this guy? I asked him to pray in tongues. Oh, he just he got delivered. In tongues. Oh, he did? This is Alyssa's dad. Do what? This is Alyssa's dad. Alyssa? The Holy Ghost. Go. The anointing. Go. Be upon this man of God. Oh, and what's going on here? How are you doing? What, what's blocking this? What's going on here? We need to face things. What? We need to face things in order to repent. Oh, no. Did you ever have any desire to be in the ministry? Yes and no. What do you want? Yes, it, but it, the it, feeling of unworthiness to be there. Yeah. And, now, listen, see all these people right here? Yeah. We all had that. Everyone, of them. it was a lie. See, the blood of Christ makes you worthy. You and me are not worthy of ourselves. You're believing lies. Go ahead and repent. Touch. Good. There you go. I know I'm chasing it. I know there's something beautiful there. Did you repent of that unworthiness? Did you repent of that? I know my God has already delivered me. So, during prayer night. Like, so he's been delivered before already. Oh, from what? Delivered. From what? I was delivered and able to forgive my dad 
There are things that he's done. You got past that? My mom. Yeah. I was able to forgive Cedric, who kind of started. Okay. Like, then how about yourself? Addiction. Yeah, yourself. Yeah. Myself was forgiven. Okay. I was able to forgive myself for the okay. hard time. Well, more so like the self hatred that I was feeling because of the sins in my past. Those are the things that he freed me from. Did you, you speak in tongues? Not that I'm aware of, no. Oh, okay. I don't think I'm gonna I've close your seen. close your eyes there. And just repeat after me, okay? Boya Basha. Boya Basha. Meno Safia. Meno Safia. Ekoba. Ekoba. Bandoria. Bandoria. Notice how easy you're repeating that? Do you happen to notice I was speaking in short syllables? Yes. Short syllables like California. Yes. Five syllables. California. Yes. Bulaba. Bulaba. Four syllables. Yeah. And yet, you're not leaving, are you? You're not leaving, are you? No. You stay here. Okay. Yeah. Now, you just repeat after me this time, and then you add some syllables on your own. And it'll start. Ready? Yo mosha va veso. Atu mosha vela. Rama shaba kite. Good. Tola la mosha dremo. Elo shalava. Andi mushandra sava. Belo tanti mushandema. Rasho vashafa. Any syllable. You say any syllable. There's no wrong answer. Yaku mushandra vashandima. Yeah, don't think about it. Just release it. Just release it. Ramo shadasa. Velo shandi moshete. Atu moshandra. Any syllable. Adam. Aroba, Shedobasi, Yendo Sanda, Vakolama. Good, just like that. Any syllable. Say it. You add one. Any syllable. Brashu Ba. Satan, stop blocking that. Stop blocking his tongue. Stop it. Okay. Hatumu Shatra Sava. Hey, you come out of there. He's got demons in his brain. Yeah. Come out of that body right now. Come on, right. Is he on he used to be on drugs? Huh? Is he on drugs? Oh no. Come out of that body right now. Come out of his brain. Come out of his frontal load right there. Come out right now. Come out of there. Satan, loose her. Loose your hold of me. Loose my brain. Loose my mind. Come out of there, you devil. Come out of my head. Come on right now. Get out of my mind. Come on. Go now. Go. Yeah, here he comes. Right now, you fornicator, you come out of there. You pervert. You get out of that body right now. Hurry up. You get out of there right now. Thus saith the Lord, get out of my body. Come out right now. Come out of there. I'm not going to die and go to hell. You're crazy. I'm getting out of here. Come out in Jesus' name. Out. Come out of there. Yeah, here he comes. Get there he goes, right there. Keep coughing. Keep coughing. Hold that. Hold that. Keep coughing. There it is. Keep Satan, come out. Keep coughing. Yeah. There it is. They're coming out now. Thank you, Jesus. Next. Next. Come out. The porn ones. Come out. Right now. You porn pervert. Come out of that body right now. He's not a pervert. You are. Come out. There he is. Come out of here, you pig. Right now. Come on. There he is. Coming out right now. Thank you, Jesus. They're coming out right now. You got the anointing, son. Take it. You're worthy. Otherwise, these demons wouldn't be coming out. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Keep going. Satan, come out of me. You stinking masturbator. Get out of the body right now. Let your hand let my genitals go right now. Stop it. Come on there, wait a second. Get out there. there we go. Come out of that body right now. Come out of that body. Now. There we go. Thank you, Jesus. Come out right now. Come out right now. Come out right. Don't stop, son. You got the anointing all over you. Don't stop. There it goes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> Get out of that body and 
let go of his healing ministry. Stop. Stop blocking his healing ministry. Stop it. No, there is. There's another one. Big one. Come out right now, you monster. Evil. Come out of him. Evil. Evil. Let go of this man of God. Let him go. Evil. Come out of my body right this second. Come out of there. Oral sex. Come out. Oral sex. Come out of that mouth right now. Come out of there. Every demon infected woman, I was come out of my body right now. All of them. Every single one. All the whores. Every whore spirit. Come out of that body right now. Get out of there. Quickly. Satan, lose your hold of me. Satan, lose your hold of me. Hurry up. You're not done. Come out of there, rest of them. Rest of them, come out. There they come. Thank you, Jesus. The rest of them, come out. You'll get out of there. The rest of them, come out. All of them. Come out of there. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for coming. It's so much like mine. I worked in the prisons. I've done it all, too. Yeah. Oh, really? Great. Yeah. Similar yeah. backgrounds. Yeah, and I, I graduated from Trinity. That's where I was. Oh. Yeah, and yeah, I'm so it's all about the word, the word and the power. But thank you. I do. I like the way you correlated the mental illness to. So thank you. Thank you. I'm gonna look at your book over there. Okay. Come okay. On. I can love you. you. Um, can you pray for back. my ear? Hmm? My, my ear. When did that go out? <laughs> of course you mean uh, December seventh. Yeah. What was happening on the sixth? I don't know. I don't know. What were you doing during that period of time? Oh, no, I was just, I just woke up. I just went to the gym. And oh, you it, went to, when did you notice it was? Um, when I went to the gym and I put my ear pod in and I couldn't hear anymore. But this hair outside, you could? Hear. And then the night before, what were you doing? Just did you watch anything on TV? I did not. Did you get a call from anybody? Not that I remember. Were you in a relationship back then? No, I was not. But a lot of things have have happened, um, like, um, like my ex and my dad. Uh, these court cases on them came up. Ex-husband. Ex-husband. Yeah. And your dad. Right. What happened? Um, well, he he sexually and physically abused me. But the ex did. Or your dad? My, my dad, and then my ex physically abused me. So it's like these the two court cases were starting to kind of come up for some reason. And they were a long time ago. So it was just, it's been a weird kind of beginning of the What's year. your ex's name? Uh, Ron. Did he speak uh, cursing over you, negative thing, criticizing you? He, yeah. Oh, and, and how long have you been divorced? I've been divorced. Well, that all happened like in 2020, but officially, like the court saying that it's done is 2021, 2021. And you have kids? No kids. Okay. Have anything to do with him now? Nothing. No what religion was he? He, um, well, he came to Christ through, uh, through well, I didn't know he wasn't a believer. <laughs> When you married him, you didn't know his... I, yeah, it was kind of... It's just all my own stuff. <laughs> um, and it was like a shotgun wedding, pretty much. And yeah, I was grieving a lot. And I just was... I didn't have my wits about me. So I, I just kind of jumped in there. And um, I learned a lot since then. <laughs> What's his name again? His name is Ronald. <laughs> is he still around? No, he's not around. He, he has a restraining order on him. Oh, yeah. he's still in California? He is. No. Do you have anything to do with the in-laws? I'm sorry. No, nothing. Oh. Done, yeah. Okay. So. Ready? All right. Father God, I want you to go uh, hunt Ron down today. I want you to go find him. I want you to tell him that she and I forgave him a long time ago. I want you to tell him that we're praying for him and I want you to save him, truly save him. Yes, Lord. He, he lied before and put on a front and she didn't catch it. 
So I ask for you to forgive her for marrying somebody she should never have married. He was a plant sent by the devil. And I want you to forgive her. I want to hear everything you're saying. <laughs> I want you to forgive her, Lord, for marrying a plant. Thank you, Lord. Someone that devil sent to her because she has the anointing and she's got a good heart and she's supposed to be healing people with these hands. Thank you, Lord. And delivering them Thank with these you. hands. Yes, Lord. And he was sent to stop her. And he put her through several heartbroken years. Pain and disappointment in the soul. Yes, Lord. And we've forgiven him. Yes, and we Lord. ask you to bless him and heal him. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. You said that many times. In the name of Jesus, we're forgiven. Her ex is forgiven. Yes, Lord. And you are to go save him and heal him. Yes, Lord. And we place him in your hands and we let him go. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Yes, Lord. All right. Now take a breath and blow. The demon that got into her ear. Come out of there in the name of Jesus. Keep blowing. Come on out. Come out of her ear. Come out of her ear right now. She forgave him. She forgave herself. Go. Go. Come out. Come out of my ear. Get out in Jesus' name. Come out of there. Get right now. And heal. 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 You speak in tongues? I do. Go ahead. Good girl, louder. I have it. You have it? Have it. Can I just put a little hum to it? Ready? Go. <laughs> Insecurity, I bind your power. Shyness. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, sing it out. Good. Can you hear your singing over there? Try again. Can you hear now? I can hear on this side. Okay. Lord, I want you to tell her what's blocking this healing. That should have been healed easy. He told me he's going to heal me. What's blocking this thing? He just told me he's going to heal me. So I've just been waiting for him to heal me. No, we, that's not going to work. Okay. Now, what spirit got in there and blocked her healing? It didn't. He didn't block this side. He just blocked that side. Right. Okay, there's a reason for that. Something happened. Tell her what it is. I hear resentment. For who? For who, Dad? For my dad. What did he do to you? He uh, he beat me and molested me. How old were you? Huh? How old were you? 
um, he took me from three to uh, eleven, and then started molesting me when I was. Oh, what's his name? Uh, Bao. 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 For dad. All right, you ready? Yeah. Father, every spirit that transferred in here from Bao. <laughs> And all that abuse and all those beatings, he used her for his own sexual gratification. And he damaged her. No father should ever do that to their daughter. Yes, Lord. The demons told him to do it. Yes, Lord. And right now, in the name of the Lord, bow, we command you to come out of your daughter right now. She's not your daughter anymore. Her heavenly father took her. That's right. That he doesn't need a dad anymore. I told him that. And now you're going to tell his demons to come out of there. Out. Come out right now in the name of the Lord. Out. Come out. Come on out. Thou, come out of there. Thou, you pervert. You sex pervert. Come out of there. Right now. You sex pervert. Out. You sex pervert. Come out of that body right now. You come out of there. What's the story on that guy? What's wrong with him? Come out of there. Uh, he's called her fivefold. I know that. He what? He's called her fivefold ministry. Oh. Come out of there. Come out right now. All right. This gal's got sex demons from her dad. He molested her okay. as a kid. His name is Dow. It's like, I feel like it's a curse or something. Somebody like is put Somebody's what? Like between my ex or him, it's like a curse or something like that. Like, What's going on?